Good evening. I'd like to open the DFU Planning Board meeting of uh, February 19th, 2019 at 7.10 in the evening at the Town Hall offices. Our agenda tonight is to review minutes of previous meetings, review mail, take some public comment, and then continue two public hearings. The first one is a, for a site plan review and special permit of a 10 Greenfield Road, which is Deerfield Natural LLC, which has submitted applications for both site plan review and special permit for a cannabis cultivation, manufacturing, and retail sales facility in a currently developed location, Assessor's Map 175, Lot 6, zoned industrial and within the town's marijuana overlay district. The second is a, con is a continuation of a public hearing for 198 Mill Village Road, Sun Mass Inc. has submitted a proposal for a cannabis cultivation facility on land currently used for agricultural purposes located at 198 Mill Village Road and including the budding properties at 196 and 200 Mill Village. Then we have a few other items including payment of postage, authorization to pay services of Sarah Campbell and Tyne and Bond. We have to discuss our annual report and we have a request for comments on two I believe zoning board issues one at five industrial drive west and one at four B uh, Boren Ave. Then we'll take up any other business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the posting of the meeting. We'll set a date for the next meeting and adjourn. Anything else from planning board members? Do you have a copy of the agenda? Do you have a copy? should have copies of the agenda. One. You guys got a copy? Copy of tonight's agenda? Yes, I do. It's right. There's some right there. Oh, Did you guys get one? So um, we we do have some minutes, and I would like to. Um, Max and Roger. Actually, before we do that, let's um, take up uh, some planning board business. One is um, there's five members, so let's introduce ourselves. Uh, oh, Rachel Blaine. John Waite. Paul Alice. Roger Sadowski, Max Avery's. And uh, one of our other members, Kip Kamosa, is ill and he's not able to make it. And the other member, um, we received a letter of re resignation um, today, so let me just read that quickly. Dear board members, effective immediately, I, John Baronis, Jr., residing at 75 Waitley Road in the town of Deerfield, Mass., resign my seat on the planning board and in said town. Um, so I, it says, um, Immediately, and this is as of earlier today. So I guess we have six members. So I'm not exactly sure what that does for our. Uh, so I won't put him down as absent then. So I guess he's he's no longer. Okay. Uh, I, I, I will have to we'll check with council what it all means and stuff. But anyway, okay. that's um. That's an official notice. So we'll see what happens there. Um, minutes. We have some. No. I have some for the 23rd of January. And then we have draft ones from, from last Did you meeting. distribute them? I emailed or just them, to me? but I didn't. Yeah, no, I sent them to everybody, but they're not complete. No. They're missing pieces. All right, so let's do the 23rd then. The 7th is still outstanding. I'll get um, that next time. But this one has some of the things we're going to yeah, for tonight. talk about tonight, does it? So if we can just take a minute to review this. You guys got it already, right? Yes. Okay, so there's extras there. Oh, this is. Spelling curve. Public hearing. Oh, yeah, okay. meeting 
was to, to site plan review and stormwater permit. But you did, we did them separately. Right, but. I know, but we, we, opened the, we opened the meeting. Oh, I see. We okay. opened the public yep, hearing. Yep, yep, and stormwater. Uh, the site uh, plan. Oh, wait a minute, no. We only voted on two things. What was the? I think instead of special permit, it was just a stormwater permit. I don't okay. think they required a special permit. Stormwater. I went by the, by the minutes of the uh, agenda. Okay, we'll figure out that. I've got the agenda This is not the set. Uh, this is not the set right one. No. This is the one hundred railroad, railroad property. Right, but I'm just. It's um. But it's very it similar to it, and uh, right. But it doesn't say anything about the stormwater. That's know, why. I know. That's I why so. I, I, re I copied what was here. So on the railroad, 100 railroad yard, we, we approved a site plan review and a stormwater. But not a special permit? And did we also do the special permit? I don't believe that was at that meeting. No, no, no Roger wasn't. On that. But we signed it. We signed off on it that night when he was here, I believe. Right, but the... Well, that's actually a decision that we're waiting to, to finish writing and sign. Oh, but okay. we, did do, we did close the public hearing and we voted on it. Okay. Um, was that a combined meeting with, uh, no. no, that was just a short one here just that came before the selectmen's meeting on a Wednesday night, 23rd. Yeah, yeah, you, you were, were you were absent that time. Right. I know we did. Um, you can go back and review the tape of it, I guess. And we approved the site plan and the stormwater, so right. that's why I'm having the votes here. for those two, but nothing else. Except for the the other one here for Hexagon. Remember the, mm -hmm. uh, the special permit right. for Hexagon? Right, and that actually is special permit and site plan review I want, because that's what we're going to sign. We have to sign it actually tonight. Okay. So that's it. Plan and special permit. So we got to add uh, stormwater to that one, or do we want to have a second? See, this was this was this was voted on the 19th of November, and, and this then, was the only thing that didn't get voted. Remember right, that, John? That's a, that's yes, and, and this November is November 19th. Right here, here it is, right here. And the reason is, um, and that's why we voted for, on it again on January 23rd. Because, right. Because the special permit permit was left was off on the 19th. Well, no, we voted 401, and that's not enough for a special permit. A special need permit a super, needs a super majority, right. so we needed five votes, so we had to re-vote it. Okay. And that's why we ended up getting the six zeros. And that's why it was just this one thing then, because the, everything yeah. was voted at the 19th. But the problem of November. is, our, our write-up is on the same special permit and site plan is on the same. It's on the same decision letter. Oh, okay. So what you're doing is the 19th won't cover it then. Yeah, this one is one. This is the one for the stormwater that we had already done. Yeah, the this one, one here was called a revote. Right. From the 19th of November. Right. And it was just this one thing for some reason had to be done because the the special permit required the super vote and the other one didn't. So I think the November 19th vote still applied for the uh, the other. In other words, if you look back All at right. the minutes of the 19th, um, that that covered the uh, All right. everything, is, just what was here. So are you okay signing this? It's dated January 23rd. 
but since the vote was prior to that date, it's okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, I could, what I can do is add to this here that, um, that which this includes was, the, which includes the site plan. Review. This this includes um, in the November nineteenth in addition to um, um, uh, vote uh -huh. included the uh, 12, 19 vote on stormwater. Because I think I think this is the only thing that had to be revoted because of the the uh, the vote wasn't yep. enough. Didn't support it. Right. So here's the record from the the 19th and then the 23rd. Yeah. See, the 19th is when we voted everything, and then we had to revote just the special permit. I think. Does that make sense? Yes. It does. Okay. So if you um. <coughs> So I'm going to pass these out to sign, but but look on the second page of them to see if if you were there. Just make sure the you were there and whether you're supposed to sign it. All right. Yeah. So you, one of these, one of these, you weren't uh, that one. You weren't here, mm -hmm. so you don't sign that one. But this other one, you were. Okay. And then. Um, Special permit, the extra large solar. Well, this one here was a start over from zero. We'd already done it, or did we pass the stormwater at the first time you round, and not the, uh, and not the rest of it? I forget how that went. But for this one, you're talking. I'm talking about this this public hearing. On the, the site plan, and yeah. what did the stormwater already get approved before on the first time around? I think we did them all this night, and we do. We did do a special permit because an industrial special permit is well. Required. Special permits listed, and the site plans listed, but not the stormwater. That's the one that we're trying to figure out why it was left out. But we voted on it. That's what I'm saying. Down here it says we voted on it, so that's why I'm saying you got to add it up there. Yeah, that's interesting because this is exactly how the my notes said that the minutes went. But. So I think we'd vote. I got that we voted on all three things. Okay, well, I can adjust the minutes to that. And that was the only thing we talked about that night on the twenty uh, third. No, we went. Well, and well, then we, we did the other one, yeah. but I'm saying the, yes. the, the, the solar ones were the only yeah. ones we did. All right. All right, so um, a motion to approve the minutes from the 23rd with those changes. I've got a question because it's a little confusing. I abstained on the set right road one. Uh, on, the, on the 12th, on right. December the 19th. Right. Yes. So we re-voted actually on this day when you weren't there. Okay. And so but it says I'm present in the minutes. It says absent, absent. Roger Shadowski. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. I'm sorry, right. Paul. So, okay. um, so don't sign the. the I'm not going to. But the other one you can sign. The, okay, the, that's uh, why I just yeah. wanted to make sure. That's no, no, no. no. We, we tried to be careful on that one. Okay, so you're adding the stormwater up above here. Yeah. And so and then, we need to have another vote. And then approval the of the special permit. Special down here. permit. Where's the Where's the special permit? Well, we it's don't not have it listed. It's not list. listed. That's what I'm saying. Let me see if I can find my minute. My. I'm sorry, we're delaying the the other things, but the people are waiting for their to get the solar thing started. So we got to make this official. Do we have this decision written up on the 
on no. the railroad yard one? Not yet, and that's what I got to do. Okay, so maybe we can do is I'll look in the minutes and we yeah, can sure, we can double check on that and see. All right. And if we need to, we can vote that special permit. I, I believe I copied everything that we had. All right. So I think we just did these two. And then if we do have to still do the special permit, then we need to do that. Yes. So we'll go look at the tape or look at the notes. Um, I can't find the I mean, notes here. Right they I, mean, I mean, after the meeting. We can yeah, see. yeah, we'll right. do it. And, um, All right, so let's hold off on approving the minutes of January 23rd. Okay. Uh, but that, those documents we're good with. Thank you. And we didn't need any supermajority on any of that. We've got everything we need. No. Is that true? Well, now, now we got to get Kip's signature on some of it, so... Next, Rachel. So Kip has to sign this one. I mean, is John? Can John yeah. sign it? Or is he? Was he supposed to? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, he should. So. No, I want to put it back in this folder so I don't. Yeah, he should. Uh, no, where's the general folder? Yeah. So hopefully we can get his signature yeah. on it. And we can go back and look at the tape if we have to. All right. We ready to move on? And I, I signed a, a, a Mullins form there, whatever they yep. call it. Get that for the last for, for last the fourth of February. All right. All right. I would like to open the public hearing that was continued from so February fourth. Call, call that tabled. Tabled. Tabled okay. the minutes for January twenty third. Yep. Okay. So I'd like to op open the uh, public hearing uh, that's continued from February fourth. Um, to act on a site plan review application and the company company name special permit application for a proposed cannabis cultivation manufacturing and retail sales facility submitted by Deerfield Naturals LLC the location 10 Greenfield Road assessors map 175 lot 6 is zoned industrial and is within the medical marijuana overlay district Copies of the proposed project application are available for, have been available for inspection at the municipal offices during normal business hours. Any person interested in or wishing to be heard should appear at this time and place designated. So thank you. If the applicants can uh, come up, introduce yourselves, and um, let us know if you have anything new to report. So just so other people, so this is just a 10 Greenfield Road. We met last month, had a public hearing, talked about the site. Uh, the building is not going to change much at all. We talked about security. We talked about lighting. We talked about traffic. Um, we talked about the uh, screening in the back. That, that was an issue that we wanted some changes made. Um, and there might have been a couple other things. I know, remember the dumpster or something wasn't on the map. So, if you can just give us an update and you have an updated um, plan for us. So, I'm not talking to one of the principals for Deerfield Naturals. So, basically, there are four things that the board was looking for from us uh, from last meeting. So, one of it, which is the uh, landscaping plan, was screening at the east end of the lot along the railroad tracks from South Main Street. So, we have that. Uh, we'll go over that. Um, one of the others was a s location of the sign, so we have put that on the plan. We will go over that. Um, Kip had asked a question about security regulation regarding fencing and if that was necessary. Um, it, it, short answer is it is not unless it's outdoor cultivation, but we'll uh, go more in depth into that. And then there is the distance from the daycare facility okay. on South Main Street. So we have a plan to show those numbers. And I will start with Mark Reed from Heritage Surveys. What was the first? What was the first item? I'm sorry. Uh, the landscaping plan. Landscaping. Sure. Uh, my name is Mark Reed from Heritage Surveys. Uh, we're the survey and engineer for this particular project. And as Matt mentioned, I can go up to the plan, but I believe that we have um, submitted two different updated plans relative to our work. If you bear with me a second. So this is the first as being the location for old sign on the site. Can you just let, it, let me just make sure we got the right dates here? This is an sure. updated February 12th. 
2019. Well, it says 14. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Minus. All right, so these are all the old ones. All right. Yeah. She got a good set there. No, no, no. I've got another copy. Right. Well, we need, we're going to need. Right? Three. So if you look at the site plan, which is C-3.0, C and it is titled Site Plan Plan for Springfield, Massachusetts, preparing for Greenfield Road LLC, we've added the location of the sign, which is being proposed within an existing island on the site behind an existing parking area or field quite a distance from Route 5 and 10 and the property line. You see it? That meets all the requirements um, under the right here. bylaw for signage, square foot size. That's right. This, this so you won't, how, how, here. how much further, how much is it set back from the road? Uh, set back from the road is approximately, can, well, it's more than it has to be. It's behind. That's what I'm wondering. Behind the parking lot. So the, the distance from the roadway, or from the property line, not from the edge of the pavement, or uh, uh, okay. from the property line, is approximately 75 feet, 75 to 80 feet from the small numbers on my low scale, uh, from the street line, uh, routes 5 to 10 being quite a distance further off the actual pavement from the area so. Secondly, the landscape plan, which is landscape plan, which is sheet L-1.0, which is also dated February 6th, which you should have there. What's the date on that one? It is February 6th. This is 12. This is 12:20. Is there another date on it? Oh, this is the one. That's Oh, that's a sign. Plan. You said L1. Landscape. Okay. Oh, L1.1. Yeah. 1.0. I mean. Yeah. So that request was that we provide some screening to the east side of the site. Yeah. abutting the uh, South Main Street corridor. So this plan shows a row of arborvitaes on, on the plan. You notice there is a gap in the arborvitae row because the town has a sewer easement and a water easement that runs through and there's a sewer manhole right in this area so we can't put any plantings within the easement. Um, just in case the town has to go and maintain that sewer. So and they can only access that sewer from your property, not correct. From, not, there's no yeah, they, there is no access the date across the railroad track. Two six nineteen. So yeah, it is coming through from mm -hmm. Route Five and Ten. So that's been added as requested uh, to the sheet. So you extended the plantings further to the north along correct. the railroad tracks. Actually, there is an existing arborvitae hedgerow. Yeah. That's out there, which is on the other side of the tracks. On the other, on the north side of the tracks, which is the spur coming into the site. Yeah. Right. So that's going to be remain intact. Yes. So we have the existing hedgerow, new hedgerow on the south side of the spur tracks coming into the building, all the way to the wooded section. In this corner of the property. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it will provide a, a buffer. Um, the arborvitae rows are five to six feet tall when planted, and they're spaced about uh, four feet on center, four to five feet on center. So it'll quickly become a dense hedge um, that will. How tall were they again? Four. To I'm sorry, um, five to six feet, probably, when, when they're planted. 
There's no, there's no blockage with the, with the spur, though. The spur is... No, the spur is still accessed. You can still access through with the spur. Right. And then lastly, the question was the distance to an existing daycare facility on South um, Main Street. Uh, it's located at 20 South Main Street. So this is a brand new plan that's dated February 12th. I'm sorry, February 14, 2019, and it's entitled Distance to Existing Daycare to Proposed Facility in Deerfield, Massachusetts, prepared for Greenfield Road, LLC. And it shows the distances from the facility, which is the growth area, I'm sorry, the retail area being A up on this corner, to the house or the daycare center of being 849.68 feet away. We went out and did uh, on the ground survey work to locate, we had surveyed all of the site itself, but to locate the corners of the house so we knew exactly where the corner of the house location is and the distances between there. Um, so we were able to show that from the retail portion of the building, it's 849 feet and 67, 68. Um, from the Grove area, which is B, which is down in here, to the closest corner of that Grove area, or Grove uh, facility, to the building, it's 528.94 feet. Your local bylaw is minimum 500 feet, so we're over uh, that requirement. And then for um, what is noted on the plan is C and D, which is proposed shipping and receiving. We also provided that information to you so that there is an existing loading box being in C and D so that we are at the closest point from that proposed C plan is 504 feet, 504.45 um, feet. Um, the way the regulation is from the facility to the facility. Um, there's an option of making the shipping and receiving area a little smaller. So that's 522.82 feet. So we believe that we meet the, your local uh, requirement of 500 feet, minimum 500 feet from a, a daycare. Is that a local or is that a CCC regulation also? That's a local regulation. Local regulation. What's the CCC oh, one? My, my name is Michael Alio. I'm with Lester Newman, Alio and Nasser. Well, the state regulation uh, doesn't apply to daycare. It's just schools and yeah. Just schools, yeah. Uh, and so, so, this, so that would be uh, from the state regulation, uh, 500 feet um, from the property line, but only for schools, K through 12. Yeah. So we're actually going to. Um, I also just want to make a clarification on C and D measurements. Um, item D, which is 528, is that what it is? Yeah, that was the original proposed extent of the loading docks. Um, C just shows that that entire section of the building is not within it. So the smaller section is actually the, the pr original proposed loading dock area. In other words, it's the, it's the one that you're intending to. Correct, with. yes. Okay. Which one is it you're intended to use? The smaller one. D. D. Yeah. Okay. Um, if we didn't take public comments sort of at the same time, that would be great. Um, uh, sure. Well, um, and we have our. Is he a building commissioner or a health inspector? In the, in both. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of you okay. is speaking right now? <laughs> Unless I missed it, I don't remember being at 20 North or South Main Street for a daycare inspection. It might have been done by my person in between me. So my office has no record that I know of. And I looked the other day and I heard of this. I don't have any record of that being registered as a state with the state. It is. So you have a certificate? Yeah, I have my license information. I don't have it with me. Yeah, because I, I have to sign that certificate off on an annual basis. 
and I don't remember being there. So we, I just would like to get that information sent forward so I have it in my office. And I'm a, yeah, I, I actually just want to be clear. What, which, where is this in our regulations? I, I'm sorry, I should. Uh, Could you say that one more time? Where is this in our regulations? I want us to all be oh. looking at the same uh, thing, and I see a couple different. It is from the regulations that you passed, if I'm not mistaken, it was last April or May, and it's the amendment to footnote eight. Oh, it's in the dimension thing. Yeah, is it? yeah it's no, uh, section uh, 2320. Uh, I can read it if you'd like into the record. If that helps. Number eight, you said? Correct. For what it's worth, I think technically um, the service that's provided at home, it's not a daycare center. I don't know if, that, if that's the question that. Well, uh, uh, that's why I want to get to the language, just so I'm making sure we're sure. all looking at the same thing. Um, so and 23 I dimension here. It's not a daycare center in terms of how the state uh, defines daycare centers. I'm not sure that's worth having an extended conversation. Well, that. no medical marijuana treatment center or marijuana establishment. So this is an establishment. Shall be sited within a radius of 500 feet of a public or private school, comma, daycare center, or any facility in which children commonly congregate. Said distance to be measured in a straight line from the nearest point of the property line of said facility to the nearest point of the property line of the medical marijuana treatment center or marijuana establishment. So that's what I wanted to really clarify here is it's, it's the, um, the distance to be measured in a straight line from the nearest point of the property line. So it's not about where the loading dock is or where this or that is. It's the property line of the facility. Could I ask to so see I what just want to be clear that we're do you mind if I we're reading the same thing, right? I, I, I don't think that we are reading the same. Thing. All right. Can I show you what I'm reading? Yeah. what we're reading. I, I haven't read what you're reading. But... Straight line from the nearest point of said facility to the nearest point of the medical treatment center. I don't know if there's... Oh, sure. the nearest point of the property line, the nearest point of the... Just shall be measured in a straight line from the nearest point of said facility. Yeah. And is that different? Uh, I guess in your mind there is a difference. It is different. A straight line from the nearest yeah. point of said facility. Nearest point of the property line. Straight line. Yeah, that is interesting that we missed a uh, change. To the extent that it, there is a discrepancy, it's then worth addressing the other issues that yeah. are well, anyway. sort of moot if it's, um, yeah. why don't I just do that briefly? All right. Uh, so um, the services provided at that site are not of a daycare center. And I submitted a letter to town council. I don't know if that was um, shared with the board. Uh, I can su submit it uh, to the board directly. Yeah. Um, so, uh, the state defines daycare centers and family care providers uh, as distinct uh, types of um, uh, services that can be provided to care for kids. So Ms. Woods, and this might go to the issue that the building commissioner raised, is a licensed family child care provider. Um, so she's definitely not a daycare center as is provided in the local bylaws. So that would take her home out of that portion of the provision. Does that make sense? Do, does that make sense? <laughs> um, why don't I just... And what is it, it called is again? Family care, care provider? provider? Yeah, yes. and let me give you a printout from the Commonwealth website. So you have it. It says right up top. 
and the child care. And there's another type of service that you can provide as a daycare center. And forgive me, I don't mean to put you at issue. So right, we'll get we'll, the, the we'll, services we'll, provided are of a family um, child care provider. There is another type of ser service, which is a more substantial service, uh, referred to as a daycare center. Uh, and that's not, um, that's not what's being provided at this facility. So the provision, the 500-foot provision, uh, there's a similar provision, as we discussed briefly, on the state level. So the state regulations don't allow you to be within 500 feet of a, uh, a school. Um, the local bylaw, your bylaw, doesn't allow you to be within 500 feet um, of a daycare center. Uh, so. She does not operate, or at this house, there's no operation of a daycare center. So we'd argue that the provision in terms of the daycare center does not, um, does not apply. There's a whole additional layer of discussion that might be worth having about uh, the remainder of whether or not, as applied to a family care provider, whether or not that would go out over the bounds of what's permissible under state law, right. um, which I'm happy to also detail if if you think it's necessary. I, I guess this issue of whether it's 500 feet from the property line or the facility makes, kind of puts it at issue. In other words, it's over 500 feet, whatever it is. It's over 500 feet from the fa facility to facility. But not and property I, line to property line. line. Oh, okay. But not from property line to property line. Uh, uh -huh. Our reading of what happened when you amended the bylaws, I actually even called the state to go over the bylaw to confirm it, is that it's facility to facility. I understand that you've got some sort of a discrepancy in terms of what's in front of you there. I don't have that document. I don't know if it's a Scrivener's error in your document. Well, it's 179. It's the 179 zoning code. Right, but he's saying that what, what we had at town meeting, which actually, actually I have that with me too, so we can double check what we voted at town meeting. Um, so, so, okay, so even if it were proper, our position is that it's from facility to facility, number okay, one. Okay. Were it from property line to property line, the provisions provided are not of a daycare center, which is what is regulated here. Right. Right. And to go beyond that, um, the Massachusetts statute governing uh, marijuana, it doesn't allow um, for, it does allow local uh, government to create new bylaws, but it doesn't allow a uh, local government to create a bylaw that's uh, not reasonably practicable. So just because children are somewhere in the vicinity doesn't mean you can't, that, that, that you can summarily deny a, a permit to somebody applying for uh, a special permit. Uh, now, when we came in this evening, I'll admit, our reading was it was from facility to facility. Um, so we didn't necessarily plan on going in detail about those other points, but if you have questions about that, uh, it, it took us a bit of time to wrap our heads around. We're happy to answer more about that. And the state, their, their guidelines are also from facility to facility, not property line? No, the state, um, and I can read it even if you'd like, but the state is from property line to property line, but the state does something different. Um, it's only property line to property line from a school doesn't contemplate yeah, right. daycare centers, yeah. right. But it, and it also says that the local uh, mm -hmm. municipal government can reduce the 500 foot distance. Mm -hmm. By pretty clear implication, it would suggest you can't increase it. And so to read this bylaw mm -hmm. otherwise would seemingly increase it. And I think that would subject it to- Really, because I thought most of the time you could make things more stringent but you couldn't reduce the state, whatever the state standard was. The, and you're saying just the opposite. It's no, the opposite, yeah. No, that's what you're saying. You're saying you can make it, you can make it um, you can, less, but you can't make it more. Or which is, yes. like making it more in order to make it more difficult or um, impossible. The state law doesn't want you to make it 1,000 feet from a school. The state law wants you to make it 500 feet or less. Or less. So you might decide for it to be 450 because the site that somebody wants it is. Right on so the, so edge, the yeah. state could pass a bylaw that says 450 feet, 300 feet, whatever it might be. Um, but they don't want you to make it 1,000 feet. So here it's only 500 feet, which is consistent with the, the state law regulation, but it adds in this additional thing of daycare centers. And then there's this other vague language about where 
where children, children congregate. Only congregate. That, uh, I would venture to guess, would stand up so well, you know, under judicial scrutiny. Just so this is the uh, the town warrant from our elections on May seventh, two thousand eighteen, and the language that the town voted on it does say uh, nearest point of the property line. So I'm not sure where this is where you got this from. Oh, so that might have been a draft. Well, it did, but uh, this this is what we voted. But then it has to go to the attorney to the um, right, and, and it, it did. That's why whatever it's you here. voted on, the state <laughs> said okay. Yeah, yeah. So we voted on it, and it's in our in our bylaws. It so is. this was a draft prior to prior to this. That's a, yeah. so. So anyway, just just to clear that up. But anyway, and, and th that's appreciated, and so that it might be worth me just reiterating those other right. points one more time. I, it, if well, I think we got it. Okay. Um, you know, so then it becomes what constitutes the language that we use in our bylaw, I think. Right. So I'm looking, um, so I'm sorry we also uh, cut you off, but I think you covered, um, I forget. Uh, Mark? I forget your name. Mark? Mark, yes. Sorry. <laughs> That's right. I think we cut you off. So you covered the, uh, a bunch of the things. Was there something else you wanted to cover before I open it up to public comment? No, I'm, I'm set. Those are the items that we did relative to the plans that we thank submitted. Yeah. So uh, the other plan that you do have is, is the sign. Right. plan uh, which shows the detail of the sign yeah. and the size of the sign All right. um, so and that's within our and that's consistent with your uh, zoning bylaw all right is there any uh, there is one more thing yeah. Matthew pointed out to me um, and it just slipped my mind that section uh, 4655 B of, uh, of your zoning bylaw and that might be worth looking at now. Do, do you mind reading it? Yeah. Which, <laughs> tell me again where it is. 4655. Uh, four, five, five, special permit requirements, uh, item B. Yeah. Uh, it actually has the language. Um, it's nearest point of facility to nearest point of facility. 4655. 4655B. All this was actually adapted from an old Department of Public Health regulation, which is no longer in existence, but that's where it came from. Oh, that's the medic right, medical marijuana. Um, no marijuana shall be sited within a radius of 500 feet from a school, daycare center, or any facility where they congregate. That radius shall be measured in a straight line from the nearest point of the facility in question to the nearest point of the medical. So, I mean, to me, nearest point means nearest point of the property, but you're, you're, you guys are saying the nearest point of the facility the being zone. the building. Correct. Yeah. Right. Um, and I have a copy of the letter that I submitted to town council. Let me just... All right. And we, you know, that's normally what we do is we go to town council. So that's yeah. good. All right. We did not get a response yet. Thank you. And what does he say there? Look. He's asking for clarification. No, I know, but what, is the, what does our town council say? Has not responded. This is, this is his request to our town oh, council. Oh, I see, I see. No response okay. yet. That's All right, why I was just going to. Okay, I'm sorry. And forgive I me, I understood from the town council. No, 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 we haven't got a response yet. Okay. All right. So um, any, any comments from others? Yes, stick. And then. I want to clarify our town bylaws, John. What is written in the bylaw is what I must enforce. So right now, without a change in a bylaw or some real big legal standing for a town council, I won't issue any permits, only based property line to property line. So I can't. My hands are tied. Yeah, that's in writing in the bylaw. That's what we're saying. It's, it's the, arguing about the facility back and forth is just yeah. that still ties my hands. So got to go to town council at minimum. Right. That's what we're suggesting. I believe it probably has to, would probably have to go to the ZBA if, if we have payment. For a why? ZBA if you want to reduce you know, go facility to facility oh. to get that reduction, you'd have to go to ZBA. I've never come across a bylaw that was written, like Roger pointed out, that could make it less restrictive. Yeah. I, every single thing in the building code, you can't make anything less restrictive. Uh. But it, yes, 
Please. Um, I'm Sarah. We, we, I'm sorry, we don't have an extra microphone, but as long as you can talk clearly, it is on TV too. So that's, uh, if, if, you, if you wouldn't mind, I guess. We didn't, we should have made Dick do that too. <laughs> I'm Sarah Allium. I live at 14 South Main Street. I was here at the last meeting and I wanted to thank you for the landscaping addition on the east side. That'll really help. Um, I've been thinking more about the lighting and we, you had said that it had to be 24 hour lighting around the whole facility, if I'm correct. And so just thinking about now too that there's going to be a gap in the Arbor Vitae and that it's going to be pretty short to start. Is it possible on the east and north sides of the building to do like infrared cameras instead of lighting and do lighting on the other sides where it's not against residential areas? Well, the, the other question is the type of lighting. And so we've already, yeah. the condition is that it has to be um, They said it had to be pointing lighting. down, which, down which so it, it can't be reflecting towards you. I think your point is you might still see it. You'll still see it yeah. down, so it still creates some. So what uh, kind of lighting do you have? The amount of lighting that you see now is not going to change. I mean, if but there's no lighting on that building right now. Uh, there's or on the back there's on the lot lighting 24/7 right now. So every utility pole on that lot has lighting. So right. I thought there would have to be additional lighting there actually will be additional on the lighting building. on the building. But right. That only goes out 25 feet from the building. If what's there isn't bothering you, the, what's being added is certainly not going to impact you. Oh, you, it, it might still bother, but that's <laughs> less. It's less you can do about it. But um, yeah. So yeah, yeah I mean, all all, I, all the wall packs on the building will be downward facing. Yeah, and that would be a criteria condition of it. It can't be. Are the LED uh, as well? Uh, the wall packs will be yes. So I, I know that I've got a street light the, in front of my house, and when they change it to LED. The light didn't come in my window anymore, but you could see it shining on the road. Yeah, so the existing um, pole lighting is maintained by Eversource, which is not LED now. Well, no, no I'm just saying that in the front of my house, incandescent bulb or whatever right. kind it was, when they change it to LED yep. lighting, got better. It, it, it stopped shining in my bedroom window. Yeah. It went down to the ground only. Yeah. So any new lighting that's added will be LED, yes. All right. And it will okay. be along the building. Correct. Not into the lot. Correct. But the lot is like right adjacent to the, like, it's still yeah. going to be in the lot. And so I would also request that as you're doing any kind of work there, if you can get better bulbs on the, 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 the existing ones. Yeah, the so, existing ones are maintained by Eversource. So right. We don't have any control. Oh, them. you have influence. <laughs> yeah, you can request you them, think. but they cost money. Um, and there is no parking lot proposed uh, on the east side of the building. Well, for employees, you said. Um, there's There'd be parking there. No parking spaces there at all. Um, if you look on the... Was that what was on the... I feel like on the last the, plan there was the definitely parking plan. there. Yeah, the site plan. Yep, go ahead. Pull it off. Um, there's, a, yeah. there's just over 100 parking spaces, and there's, there's none in that east portion. You've got some on the south. South, south, and, east, uh, south and west side. Mm -hmm. And is this little um, circle with a wing coming off each side? Is that a light? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so there's Those one. Off the utility pole. So there's one on the west side of the parking lot. And one on the south here. And then this wall will have wall packs on the, it. Looks yes. like there. All right. Thanks. All right, thank you. Anything else? I had a small question. Yep. Sorry. No, no, no. You don't. That way people at home can hear. We do have lots of people. Sometimes lots of people watch. <laughs> Apparently. So my name is Maggie Wood, and I own the Family Child Care licensed by the state on 20 South Main Street. And last week after the town meeting, there was a solicitor that knocked on our door at 8 p.m. to ask how we felt about the new facility. And I just thought that was a little bit strange without any, like, maybe a letter or a phone call or, and I didn't really know what he was looking for from me, just for me to just be like, oh, sure. But I don't, I thought it was just a little bit odd. I don't know. 
Because <laughs> we have little kids, and you know, it's just. Oh, well, was that, that was Thomas said, Lesser, who's the attorney that's been appearing here before. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. And it, so but, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll extend apologies for him. I, he, he's a nice guy. He didn't mean to creepy. create an uncomfortable <laughs> situation. So I apologize. Mm -hmm. um, that's, but it just seemed like it could it could have been conducted a different way, you know, during the daytime or with a phone call or a letter or yeah. email or yeah. any of it. I'm listed as a family child care provider on the, on the website for the state, so it's really, really easy to find all of my information. It's, I'm assuming you did find all that. But. I will absolutely convey that. Thank you. Okay. Any other, anything else? the public I, this is when I also like to go see what other people in the town have said so we usually get some letters let me see what we received where's what the folder for the evening yeah. Yeah. are we through with this um, plan oh here? good is there anything in there from um, are we through with this here town officials John? yeah people don't have more you guys want to take a look at it? You want a mix? From the highway superintendent, the two sore easements um, and the utility easement must be, uh, they must have 24 hour access. So we think we had talked about that before. Um, other than that, DPW has no issues. I was told our building inspector filled out a form. I don't, I don't see it. I, you know, sometimes the mail doesn't get here, Jack. What, do you have any um, comments? No, I think I made enough comments for tonight. There, there's no other building, building concerns, and there's no other board of health concerns, too. I should have had comments on both of those. The only thing we do want to get clarified is daycare versus the, the setbacks. Yeah. That's it. The, um, I think I mentioned this at the last meeting. Um, I, I, anybody here from the Deerfield Police Department? I was hoping someone would come. They've been um, in correspondence with your security people and said that everybody's working well together and they feel comfortable with all the precautions there. So, so again, we're the site plan review and special permit uh, review authority. So anything we do, you still have to do everything the state CCC says so that that's it's been determined and most of that the storm water is not applicable. Right. Right. Okay. Because there's no. Uh, yep. I understood that. I saw that in state really building changing. changes. Yep. Yeah. I'm wondering if it wouldn't be. Uh, it, it might help the process along if you authorize town council to speak with us about the outstanding legal issues so we can refine them. I know he'll be hesitant to talk to us if yes. he hasn't heard from you guys that it's appropriate. I, I think one of the things is we want to narrow things down so he's not yeah. just getting all kinds of stuff. But if it's this one issue, that would certainly be appropriate. Yeah. So, and um, we've already sent a preliminary letter. There are a few things that occurred to us after that relating to the same issue that we might share. But all right. rather than I think a telephone call might make more sense. Yeah. Than, um, so, um, so this is the point we have to decide as a board. We've pretty much heard everything, and you know I don't think we have many issues with the site plan review. I also remind everybody this is our first. Um, this this would is the first application for marijuana retail sales. So any decision that we write, this is more for the special permit actually. Um, any decision we, we write, we want it to be really good. Right. And so I'd rather have it kind of written ahead of time so that we can read it and know what we're signing instead of saying, oh, we'll do it next month. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm hesitant to, um, you know, to take a vote on that tonight. But anything else that possibly could come up for the site plan? Any other issues with the site plan review? Well, it seems like there's questions about is it from the facility, the property line? So, and, right. That, 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 yeah. That's a um, zoning right issue. But as far as... I mean, they're not changing the building, so that makes it a lot easier. Um, we paving some places, all that, so all fine. So if that's the only issue, then I would recommend we, um, I guess we got to keep the public hearing open because we're going to get new information from our attorney. 
and then the next time that can be, we can just go directly to that issue. Continue it to. So let's, does someone want to make that motion? I move that we continue the, um, this open uh, public hearing to a date. A date and time. Well, did somebody second it yet? Well, well, yeah, I haven't had a date. date yet. Oh, I see. I see what you Our next okay. scheduled meeting is, would be March 4th. 4th. March 4th. To yeah. March 4th. Mm -hmm. um, yep, that's what, I, that's what I move. 7 o'clock. So that's 7 o'clock. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, I'm going to say his. I'm sure you wanted a seven. Oh. <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> As opposed to six or five or yes, four? Yes, well, that's what I'm just saying. <laughs> it seemed to be a rotating series of I'm sorry. I know. We go back and forth. So <laughs> does that work for you guys? Or? Six? Well, no, that no. day. Yeah, and seven, and yeah, if we do day. six, yeah, I guess it's safer to do six. Yeah. Is it? Can you get, can you get here six? <laughs> for you. I know six is, seven, gets harder than art. Six is no. hard for me. Yeah. I think no, I, I'm just posing the question because I knew, know that it will carry on. So whatever we can, well, whatever fits everybody's schedule. That's all I'm saying. I and, like and the steadiness we've got, of seven. We've got what six people now instead of seven. All right. So but it sounds like seven safe. I think so. seven's fine. Yeah, awesome. that's fine. I seven. just wanted to pose the question. That's all. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Six so zero zero. You have no, that form. Six five. Five four. Five of us. Um, yes. Do you have that continuation? Yes 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 yes. Form? All right. So thanks for the new Good plans, enough. and so now we're really down to one issue. So I'll convey that message to our attorney and Thank ask. Uh, do we have a copy of the state regulations? I have it online. It's no, online. I don't yeah. have a physical copy of it. It's long. D I'm Diana. Sure it is long. Can I just ask, so we just agreed that there's one issue with this uh, 10 Greenfield Road one that we want our co town council to weigh in on, and so about the distance to the, uh, uh, a, um, Do we want to authorize daycare center, center or to family? Him, talk to him based on this letter. Um, you, you sent it already to him? Yes. I've already sent it February to him. 5th. I left him a message, just, right. you know, Curtis message, and he indicated by email that he would feel uncomfortable speaking with me well, directly. That's why them. either Diana or I should inform him, please, yeah. please take this up because we've got to pay for it, but then we can also bill you as the applicant. So, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> John, did you say seven or six or three? Seven o'clock for this one. Yeah. All right, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Oh, so I need you to sign. Oh, Matthew. okay, one of you needs to use to this. So you don't have any. No, I, I don't. Was, yeah. I was getting good at it now that you get good at it. Yeah, 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 just, yeah. Until the, you end up putting I the same it. dates like over and over again, right? Over and over again. I don't know. All I don't right. get it. What do we say? Four, right? Oh, Fred. See that? Sorry. Do you have a. Um, My first one. Did you get two copies of that the letter that he sent to no, our attorney? No, I'll make, make a copy of it here. Because I want to keep, I wanna keep, yeah, keep that, that in that. I want to keep that in the file. So. Yeah. Is she, can Diana make that copy? Yeah, we got her. Yeah. And then okay. this is the so, plan. Yeah. That's you. So that goes with that. No, I think right there. there was some handouts you signed this before, right? Yeah, yeah let me keep for writing it. Is there any make sure I got everything right. Goodbye. This is the 19th now. Today, the 19th? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should be in yep. here then. Okay. I usually try to make sure there's a copy in here before we release it. Oh my it God, you just write it over and over again. Oh. Well, there was, a, there was a presentation that came up with the, on the easel over there, and I thought he handed out a copy to everybody. That's why I was wondering if there was extras kicking around. March 2019 at 7. And did we sign the did oh, we sign God. the authorization for Sarah Campbell there. to get paid? No, that's, that's on the agenda right. for today. And then he's yeah. going to sign yeah, it at the bottom. Sure that's him. That. She sent me an email. I thought it was chair. already done. And you know the McInerney boys we've met once. I know. Before. I you know that it. we met at their house once at the old house in Deerfield. When I yeah, I, I spend all the time. So I was like a hundred years. All right, we're, we're going to go on to the next meeting. All right, good, good, good. He's signing. So that's that's the folder I was looking for. Sorry, can you put some of this here? Yeah, stuff in there. That's his letter. Uh, you handed it to me. And, but there was, I thought there was something else, too, that I wanted to put in there. Oh. Oh, uh, Paul Alice's thing. 
Just got it should go in the front. I want the um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. Priscilla and those yep. guys should and see that. And this too. And here, you need to sign this. Board signature. Your your advice, you could do it. Okay. Sure. Uh, I, I, I knight you. <laughs> yes. That gives me a heebie If you keep feeding me. Kiss his ring and you can do anything. If you keep, a, you keep feeding me, then, you know. Rachel. You, yeah, yes. Kiss his ring and you can do yeah, anything. Yeah. There might be two pieces of paper. Yeah, there's another one. All right, let's open the next uh, public hearing. And that's 198 ring. Mill Village Road. And we have a box for that. Can you. Uh, there it is, right here. Oh. Let's open the box for that. Like 812, maybe. Rachel. We gotta get someone in the planning department to um well that goes with these files. Oh okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well I thought you had one down there of this. No, that's upstairs. Okay, yeah. all right. Okay. This is what I couldn't remember. This guy's. You made a copy of this. What's These that? are my notes. What's that? These are my notes. Somebody made a copy. John. I was. Oh. Good. Yeah. Oh, see. I read through them. They're not unhelpful. They're just missing chunks. The upper. What's it? Argents. So it goes. All right, who's got the uh, who's special got? permit announcement? The special uh, hearing, the uh, site, uh -huh. site plan review here. I guess I'll just read what's on the agenda. Can I get your guys' names before you? Yeah, my name is Pat Melnick Sr. Pat. I'm a lawyer from the Northampton branch of the Melnick clan. Melnick Sr. And your first name? Mine? No. Oh, my first name is Yap. J A A P. J A A P Molnar. Correct. Okay. And Dick Evans and Ch Chris Chamberlain and. I'm Don Dupendorf from Williamstown. Don. You remember Don? Yep. Dupen. D E N D O R F. So I'd like to open the public hearing, which is continued from February 4th, for uh, the site plan review and special permit. 198 Mill Village Road. SunMass Inc. has submitted a proposal for a cannabis cultivation facility on land currently used for agricultural purposes located at 198 Mill Village Road and including abutting properties 196 and 200 Mill Village Road. Assessor's Map 94, lots 459, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. And this is a, um, I think we had a meeting in, um, started in December, I think was the first public hearing. So we've had a couple already. And so we're narrowing, narrowing it down to just, a, I think, a few issues. So um, we have um, so notes from the last meeting. So just to remind people that this is a just cultivation um, and that the town voted for that and it's in a residential uh, agricultural area and it's permitted in this area. And so we had, um, we hired a peer review from Weston and Sampson who looked at the, um, the plans that were submitted and we gave them a few special things to look at, but they did, did the full review and they have uh, sent a letter out back to you, I believe. So I guess um, maybe we start with an overview from our peer review and then you guys hopefully had responded to some of them and uh, do you have new plans for us tonight? 
Um, we have plans uh, regarding the additional information that was collected. We got the peer review comments um, on Friday, so the full set of plans has not been updated. Um, but uh, we have gone through the comments, and uh, we don't object to incorporating any of the uh, suggested changes. Um, so I will, um, I have a few packets here. I'm going to keep one so I don't forget what's in them for just a moment. But this additional information uh, includes a draft of a consolidation plan of the different lots um, that we had talked uh, variously about uh, lot combination and whether that would be an A&R. Uh, it's not an A&R since we're not dividing land, but this is a draft of the plan that the surveyor uh, would provide to combine the lots that are in question, so that's clear. <laughs> Uh, one of the peer review comments was to uh, submit a floor plan as well as elevation of the building. Um, those are included here. Um, another of the comments was uh, asking about the uh, photometric plan of the lighting, um, which we had done, though, in between the original submission and today. So I have included uh, the photometric analysis of the lighting to show that it complies with uh, standards for light intensity and uniformity, as well as uh, eliminating light spill across the property line. Um, and then finally, there is a demonstration. There was a comment um, about the truck turning movements. Uh, just uh, so I will uh, say that in the existing condition, uh, they have large tractor trailers in there on a weekly basis. Uh, in the future, it will be a monthly basis, and the parking lot is uh, laid out in a very similar fashion at the end of the day. So we're highly confident, even before this analysis, that, that our site can accommodate those trucks. But I have run a 50-foot tractor trailer uh, on the turning analysis software and provided a, a figure um, just demonstrating that that truck can get in and out of the site. Um, so those are, I believe, and. Joe can comment better than I can. I believe those were uh, the additional pieces of information that were requested as part of the peer review process. There were also a number of uh, clarifications and corrections to the plan that were suggested. And again, uh, we uh, are happy to incorporate all of those into the plan, um, but in the six hours of working time between then and now, have not done so yet. Nice. So I wonder if Joe, could you maybe come up and just go over some of the some of the highlights, I know you, you went a lot of them, as he just mentioned, are just cleaning up the plans a little bit or something. Sure. But um, did everybody, the board members didn't get this, huh? Nope. Would you get what? The uh, peer review yeah. report. Sorry Do you have that. copies? No, I, don't, right. I don't see No, any. I mean, it's a sort of three and a half page, but why don't we just, we just go through it, kind of like I say, call out the highlights. Sure. Uh, for the record, my name is Joe Perigini. I'm a professional engineer with Weston Sampson. Uh, from peer review submitted on the 14th. Um, I'll, for the benefit of the members that did not receive the comments, I'll go through them. Uh, they started with a series of comments on the site plans that were reviewed. Um, we're requesting that a legend be added to the plans. Um, labeling of the upland review and riverfront areas, those are the 100 and 200 foot limits. Um, we asked for a detail of the permanent pavement repair. Uh, there's utilities that are going to extend into Mill Village Road. Um, we were looking for clarification on one of their details uh, for the, um, this was the drainage structure that's in the infiltration basin and the incoming and outgoing pipes. Um, there was uh, an area of permeable versus impermeable pavement. Um, they did have a dash line to indicate where it would transition, but we thought it would be uh, helpful to change the hatching to better distinguish uh, the two type of pavement surfaces. Um, we found a duplicate call out for their uh, proposed 2,500-gallon concrete septic tank, uh, just a minor comment. Um, we saw that there were bollards shown in areas around the um, Generator and propane tank. Uh, we just asked that there be a call out and a detail. Uh, that was something that could be indicated in a legend as well. Um, we asked the question about whether or not a dumpster re was required on the site. You know, it's something that uh, usually 
If it's required, you would show it with the applicable enclosure. Actually, if you don't mind, I would jump in with that. I believe this was in the project narrative, but perhaps not. But the intention is to store all uh, trash within the building, um, both the cannabis and non-cannabis waste, um, before having it hauled away. So, no dumps. Correct. No dumps. Um, there was a proposed access sign detail provided. Uh, we just asked that it be pointed out on the plan unless we missed it um, as a symbol. Um, uh, we asked that a note be added to the plans that um, indicating that the Town of Deerfield Stormwater Authority of activities per section 10 construction inspections be added also a note be added to the plan that the requirements for obtaining a certificate of completion per section 11 of the stormwater regulations and um, to indicate whether or not or where the snow disposal would be uh, taken care of on site what that would be um, just a clarification um, we know the site's limited um, uh, the next set of comments had to do with grading and drainage. Um, there was a note on the plan C-1.0 that indicates that roof runoff from the proposed building be directed to the proposed infiltration basin. We just wanted to know how that was being done, was, whether it was overland or piped below ground. Um, and that could be... Um, uh, updated on one of their details as well. Uh, we also uh, recommended that uh, a few notes be added uh, specific to the infiltration basin. Uh, some of these items uh, come out of the uh, state regulations or recommendations for infiltration basins. Uh, one would be that the infiltration basin be constructed with low ground pressure equipment that would minimize compaction of existing soils. Uh, just to avoid unnecessary compaction. Um, uh, to limit heavy, heavy vehicle construction, traffic over that area proposed for the infiltration basin. Um, also that the construction of the basin be done during dry conditions and not immediately following a storm event. Um, we then had three stormwater management report comments. Um, one was based off of a note on C-1.0 that roof runoff or a portion of roof runoff from the existing greenhouse gutters shall be discharged to the roof of the new building. We wanted to verification that that additional roof runoff was taken into account in the stormwater calculations uh, because that roof runoff discharges to the infiltration basin. Um, we just want confirmation and verification that it was included in the sizing of that basin. Um, comment number two, we had observed that uh, four test pits were conducted throughout the project site, um, but none of them uh, were done within the actual footprint of the infiltration basin. Uh, we recommend that an additional test pit be done um, during or prior to construction to verify that the uh, assumptions or design uh, assumptions made on the basin uh, can be confirmed by the design engineer that there are no um, restrictive features, ledge or otherwise in the footprint of that basin. Uh, and th just there I want to add that um, we uh, finally located the infiltration basin after the test pits with the backhoe had been done, but I did go out myself um, informally to do hand auger test holes in the exact location and found uh, soils that were consistent with the test pits that uh, the infiltration design was based on, uh, but those were not submitted as part of the package. So what, not a test pit, but, but testing? Correct. Okay. Um, but I don't object to having an additional full test pit um, done you. at the basin, absolutely. Yeah, and, and that would be something just for the benefit of the design engineer. It could be done during just during construction, but before it's constructed, just to confirm that there's nothing unusual that could be uh, encountered in that area. Um, uh, last comment is, under stormwater management comments is um, 
we, we just noticed a, a slight inconsistency between the peak flow rates in the table in the summary and those indicated in the HydroCAD results um, and just be updated accordingly. We don't think that that would change the design. It's just a, just for clarification. Uh, the next set of comments were erosion and sedimentation control comments. Um, there is a note on C-0.3 that a riprap splash pad shall be added uh, at the outlet of the pipe cistern overflow. Uh, like that's the name of my next band. <laughs> 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 oh, Can I get royalties on? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we just ask that that be shown uh, on the plan, in addition to the call out, in terms of dimensions and, and location. Um, uh, there was a note that there would be uh, soil stockpiles on site. We just ask that the stockpiles be. Um, have perimeter erosion controls added to them. And we also ask that erosion control measures or some type of note be indicated that the infiltration basin be protected um, in some way after it's constructed to prevent migration of sediment into the basin and potential clogging. Um, the next set of comments were the uh, after the review of the wetland mitigation uh, plan. Um, the, a plan that was prepared by SWCA environmental consultants, uh, it was uh, named Wetland Enforcement, dated uh, January 16th, uh, 2019. Uh, it indicates an area of proposed wetland mitigation of 2,000 square feet. Uh, this is to offset an existing uh, wetland impact of 1,000 square feet. We just ask that either that mitigation plan or that mitigation be shown on the site plans uh, or that mitigation plan be incorporated or added to the set. Um, we're also asking that um, for that work to take place that the proper sediment controls be put in place and shown on the erosion and sedimentation control plan to protect the adjacent wetlands. And I'll add a little clarification on that. Um, this is the wetland it mitigation issue that came up after our plans were submitted to the Conservation Commission that DEP flagged. Um, so I, I think the board is aware that the Planning Board and Conservation Commission jointly had the peer review done. So that's the reason that the wetland mitigation is included in here. And uh, we're still awaiting confirmation. So. Uh, Unlike most projects where this might be a proposed condition that would be permitted by the Conservation Commission, this will technically be an enforcement action against us to force us to, um, to do the uh, mitigation, which we're willing to do um, to, to rectify some previous wetland mitigation that, that was not realized. Um, so that's also not in the plan because we have not come to a conclusion with the Conservation Commission as to the exact square footage that we need to replicate. And where where are you thinking of doing um, So it needs to be connected to the same system of wetlands. So we are looking at the um, northeast corner of the site, uh, which is the same location where the disturbance happened. Um, so essentially, if the wetland is at a particular elevation, we will dig the adjacent land down to that elevation, uh, import soils as if necessary, probably not in this case, because there's a lot of uh, hydric soils in that area, and then revegetate it. Uh, that's a plan prepared by our wetland scientists uh, as, as our proposal for what we suggest that the Conservation Commission uh, impose as mitigation. All right. But it's ultimately up to them to um, decide uh, whatever we should do. When's your next meeting with them? Um, I believe the end of, oh. yeah. Thank you. end of next week. Oh, all right. <laughs> Um, we had one traffic comment, uh, which was to verify that uh, yeah, a... That's what you just talked about. It, you're right, um, that they, they submitted a figure. Uh, this was just to verify that the tractor trailer can maneuver um, in and out of the site. Um, we had a, a few utility comments. Uh, just a clarification, there's a proposed six inch fire service originating from a 10 by four tapping sleeve. I think that just is a minor clarification to revise the call out. Um, there is a proposed septic system. Um, we just uh, commented to verify that that 
septic system meets the required setbacks from any existing residential septic systems and or domestic water piping or wells. Um, uh, and I'll add to that, we've been working with uh, the health inspector to actually um, work toward a design where we will consolidate uh, the septic systems for the two residential lots, which will no longer be residential lots uh, that are combined with the site uh, to ensure that that happens. Um, our last comment on that was uh, a pretty standard comment that the proposed uh, septic system meet the requirements uh, for Title V and the local Board of Health Code, um, and that it re obviously requires approval prior to construction. Um, and then there was one final landscape comment, um, and it was really just that there was a call out for the proposed um, Hollies, the Ilex, Opaca, Miss Helen, uh, which wasn't consistent with the planting list in name and quantity. From our plant people? <laughs> I, Come on, guys. I'm going to have a word with the landscape. Jeez, whiz. <laughs> I, I am the engineer, so that's all I can all say. All right. And that um, completes my comments. Thanks, Joe. All right, so you said most of these you'll be yeah, we don't, getting on the plan? We don't object to any of the suggested changes. Uh, and we will incorporate them into a, a set. Uh, we'd also include the uh, Conservation Commission uh, conditions or comments if there are any. Can you just talk a little bit more about the septic so that I'm clear on that? So you're going to consolidate the two. Just go walk me through that. Right. So uh, in the existing condition, we have three separate lots, uh, the, the greenhouse and the two houses. Right. Um, what we are going to do, because Sun's Mass is going to purchase all of the lots, the front lots will no longer be allowed to be used as residences. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll be used as, as office space or, or something like that. Um, in order to make the site more efficient, um, since we have to build a new septic field anyway, we're going to size that to uh, receive wastewater from all of the all facilities three. on site. So they would each have their own septic tank, uh, which would then uh, presumably be pumped because it's a pretty flat site um, to a single distribution box um, and to the septic uh, field. And this is something that we've been talking with Dick Kalashevsky about, uh, and, and he's comfortable that, that we have a plan that, that will satisfy uh, the health regulations. Thanks. The site became more complicated when we decided to add a few different lots together here. Right. So we're trying to keep it as simple as we can. So these plans that you gave us tonight are still, they don't have all these um, Right, so the, the sheets that you got tonight are additional sheets. They're not revisions yeah. of uh, the site plan drawings. Um, and uh, I suppose uh, we would also request uh, that, uh, given that the, the comments in general are small revisions and clarifications that uh, that that revision could be done on a condition um, of approval if that's if we're otherwise in a position to to vote tonight that's a request thank you for that request um any any other any questions from the planning board members about those issues they yeah they don't seem too too difficult to meet well we're still going to talk about that yeah it's um so the, the peer review was looking at all these things that we normally look at, stormwater, traffic, lights. Did you see anything about lighting? Was that on that? They, they uh, have addressed the yeah. fact that they are, um, uh, it's a type of lighting that is, is required, uh, shielded. Um, I think we just asked for a detail for a concrete uh, foundation lighting support um, and that they had indicated that a photometric plan um, will be submitted to indicate that there will, will not be um, uh, light wash onto adjacent properties. Right. And that's one of the documents that, that we submitted tonight. I was under the impression that you weren't going to even have any outside lighting. It was more infrared cameras and stuff. Um, uh, partially correct. Um, there's no specific security lighting, but we do have lighting in the parking lot um, for employees uh, coming and going during the, the right, shift change hours. Under the greenhouses, there was a building. 
Correct. The, the yeah. infrared cameras will operate on the ambient lights. Because um. that was part of that first one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. So those are good ones. Um, again, like the previous um, one, we get. I got email from our chief of police saying that security. They're working with the security folks at your place and he's happy with everything that's going on there so and again that's more the state CCC regulations than ours but it does it comes into the plan the fencing and everything is on is how does on the, the state plans. review that also oh yeah, yeah. So there will be a, a submission that checks off a number of boxes interior and exterior of the building that's called an architectural review um, where they go through a lot of that detail So then, so some of the other um, things, we, I guess now we got to talk about the, the lots. So looking at the, the, Look at the, what? the issues from the last um, meeting, we, we talked a lot about consolidating, consolidating the lots. So can you explain more about what you've decided to do with that? The engineer will step aside and let all the lots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. It gets complicated. <laughs> well, we are consolidating them. Right. That's the easy answer. You can see the plan there. It, it, it shows uh, all six parcels. So is this, is this the best one. plan to be looking at now? That's the one. All That's right. the best one to be looking at. Right. So in the, you mentioned the houses in the front, but not, so not these two houses. You're talking what's inside there, the black. There two houses. There are two houses that, are, that straddle the driveway. I, I drew that heavy line over the surveyor's plan, and I now realize that I drew it in the wrong place. Here, you want to? Yeah. Yes. Sharpie? Sharpie, fix everything. Yeah. Okay, so it, it is in fact, yeah, that's what I was planning. Okay. So take out that line. So did you, did you get that? So it doesn't match that copy. I don't have it. You see, Mark, so it does include both. The house is on both sides of the driveway. That's the driveway. Mm -hmm. that, that yeah, yeah. yeah. So this line comes out. Yeah. Yeah. The surveyor's line was too light, so I highlighted it to make it clearer. Yeah. His so picture goes to the corner there. Max, to move it out. Don't move it out to the corner. There you go. No, no, the whole the whole way. Go the whole way. That first line yeah. you drew is wrong. And then wipe out that, other piece. that line's not a wreck. That's the wrong line. Yeah, just make sure I still can live there, okay? <laughs> so yours is outside. Yeah. Well, there's no septic there, though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So I guess, so we got this issue here. So, and I guess impervious surface is the other issue. So just to be clear, we're in... Um, Joe, did you look at that? Or did, did you? Yes, based on the table. Say, um. So the in the zoning district, uh, we are we cannot exceed thirty percent impervious area coverage, um, and uh, based on the area of the highlighted properties. Uh, including all of that area uh, with the proposed impervious area. Um, it's noted on the plan. I believe it's around 19%, um, but I don't have that plan in front of me. With, when you, when including you put in all of the lots. Including the back. Correct. All right. So I wasn't sure if you were going to get it up front here, but it's still a um, thing. Based on the proposed plan, it is not possible to meet the 30% coverage. Um, in fact, the existing site is, is over 30%. Um, but as, right, it's a right. pre-existing option. Yeah. All right. Um, so what, what was the decision in A&R or no? Now it's something different you're talking about, how to combine the properties? Well, ANR stands for approval not required under the subdivision control law. Right. And we're not subdividing anything. Right. So technically, I suppose you wouldn't call this an ANR plan. 
but but we've developed this plan and we we could bring it in for your approval if you want it but uh, we would just put it on record and we'd be happy to in fact we anticipate that you would make it a condition uh, of the permit that these this consolidated plan be, be, be recorded yeah it's also gonna be a single deed single deed is required by your uh, your code all right, so that's it. Single deed to single owner with a single defined plan on record. All right. All right. And then, so then the, other, the additional question now becomes that some of this is APR. And so what's the latest on that? Well, the latest is, um, you know, we've reached out to MDAR, but without much success. Um, however, we did submit, uh, I think you got a letter from, from Rich Hubbard, uh, and I'd ask you to consider that and put that in the record. The question is whether consolidating non-APR lots with APR lots <coughs> constitutes a violation of the APR. And, um, and it's my contention that it does not, uh, and I think the other lawyers here share that view, and Rich Hubbard, who sent you the letter today, shares that view. Yeah, and uh, we, we, I, I did receive one at my office today. Um, you have a copy. I don't know if we have it on the... At the time. I'm not sure that was the question. I think everybody's clear that you can combine APR and non-APR right. land. That's not an issue. Oh, I think that was the issue. Wasn't it? That wasn't my issue. Was, are you going to get it out of APR? Oh, we don't need to. We don't need to, but, but if, we, if we had to, we could it's because no there's, there's, there's frontage. The APR lots still keep their frontage. So that we, and we could come in with an A&R plan for subdivision, and I think, I think it would be approvable. So I guess, I guess maybe we really need to get to the, what, what's the question? So yes. the question what, is, this is no longer APR use. Well, that's, that's that okay. Whole, that whole parcel mm -hmm. is no longer APR. So I guess that's the question. It's so, not agricultural. So you can't have it in APR, so you've got to get it all out. Uh, no, this part it. was never APR. It was right. just that. Right, that's but that's got to go too. Right, well, they want to incorporate that into this and use it as like right. their impervious. Stop. But there's there's no requirement that a parcel, an APR parcel, must be a standalone. That it you can't have a parcel of land that's portion of which a portion is under APR and a portion is not. Right. Those are very common. There are a lot of parcels. In fact, Pioneer Gardens owns a couple right now that, that have APRs on part of the lot. Right. So that's that's really not an issue. Because Mr. Dubendorf might do. Well, let me, because I, I, know, I know you got something to say on that. I just want to make sure we're, we're talking about the same question. And, and, and I'm not sure. Um, so let's clarify, Max. Because there is a lot of places where APR is combined on the same deed with non APR, right? Right. So that's not an issue. But this is a non APR use. So, so you now are getting into the use, use of, the, of that property. Right. And now it's all one property. It's not agriculture anymore. Even though. They're, they're contending, they're proposing that they will plant, do agriculture on this lot. I think the question is... They need so many square feet of... That, that now you're calling this property goes with this to get the impervious. Right. And this is my, in my own mind, is that it's like you're, you're counting it twice. You're counting it on this property, but then you're also counting it on APR property. So it's a little, it's like double counting in my mind. We've created a single lot. So... Um, so I, you know, we're happy to hear what you say. I did say, I, I know I said back in December, we, were, we want to hear from MDAR, because MDAR is in charge of the APR. Rich Harvard used to be in charge of the APR, and I appreciate and I, I responded to him, and I said I appreciate his input. And I would also think that he would want us to get some kind of input from MDAR. I know MDAR doesn't move quickly. We There's no quickly. mechanism, are you, I'm not aware of any mechanism. Ago. I, I, do you remember me saying that? As a, as, a Deerfield, as a chair of the Deerfield Planning Board, I asked you directly, I said, we want something from MDAR. And that's because right. we don't feel comfortable making decisions without knowing that the state is, is on, it's kind of, if we're all on the same page. We've made a so good I'm effort. just going to say that. We've made a good faith effort to get something from MDAR. I've talked to the assistant commissioner who has said that he's never been contacted by anybody. The commissioner hasn't been contacted by anybody about this project, as of, as of at least a couple weeks ago. Well, I've contacted the head of the APR program. But they won't, there's no mechanism for, for grant for giving advisory opinions uh, on, in the, in, in, at the Department of Agriculture. I have another case that's unrelated to this where I've sought an opinion from them. I've been waiting nearly a year. You approach them, they want to 
take, they want to take their time, they want to appoint a committee, they want to make a field visit, they can drag it out forever. I think it would be inappropriate for this board, if I may say so, to condition your decision on what the Mass DAR may or may not do in this case. The issue before this board is does our application meet all the standards that are laid out in the bylaw? And I think we have met each and every one of those standards that's in the bylaw. Now, I know you'd like to go outside the bylaw, but I don't think you can do that, frankly. And I would encourage you not to do that. I think it would be improper for this board to rely on a third party over whom we have no control whatsoever as a condition of granting our permit. Thank you. Uh, you I, yeah, we definitely want to hear, we we want to hear from you. I can speak to it. The APR imposes use restrictions on well-defined property. In this case, it's three parcels. It says you can't use these parcels for certain purposes. In this case, those parcels will remain in an agricultural use. They will be leased back to the seller and will remain so. There won't be any violations of those use restrictions. The, the APR itself reads as follows in a couple spots. One is on the last page of the text. This instrument is not a deed. It does not purport to transfer a fee interest to the grantee, that's, that's MDAR. So we do have, we will, and there's another reference in the APR earlier on, and I'll read that to you as well. It says, notwithstanding any provision of this instrument to the contrary, the grantors, in this case, the sellers, hereby reserved to themselves, etc., all other customary rights and privileges of ownership as set forth below, including but not limited to the right to privacy and to carry out regular ag agricultural practices, etc., And it talks about what can be done on the property. This is not, <clears throat> this is not anything other than a use restriction. Easements restrict use on certain portions of property. And when you combine them, you don't say you can't, you can't combine them because there's a use restriction. Here there is a use restriction only on the land specified, not on other land. So as long as it stays in that use, it's not an impermissible, uh, impermissible circumstance to combine them into what is now going to be a perimeter plan. One lot, common ownership like your bylaw requires. Let me say one more thing. If, we, if you hold that you cannot use APR land in the double counting fashion, because I hear that, if you hold that, you deny the utility of APRs to farmers across the Commonwealth, or at least across the, the, the town of Deerfield. One of the rights they retain is exactly that, to use frontage for other purposes, to use those areas for this case, to calculate impervious coverage. There's no, no language in this APR whatsoever that says you can't use this land to help meet the zoning bylaw requirements with respect to impervious coverage. There's nothing in it. It says what we're trying to do is preserve ag land and preserve it in, in a very specific area. There's nothing that says this land can't be, can't be used for these purposes. Now, let me just say one more thing. <clears throat> there, are some, there are some lines of cases in zoning where a piece of use, like, like, a, like a parking lot, is the same as the principal use. And therefore, if you have a, a, another zone or another district, you can't put the parking lot there unless it's permitted. Here we have none of that. There's nothing in your bylaw that says this has to occur within the same district. It does say it has to occur within the same lot. And what, what is being presented to you is one ownership, common ownership of all the lots. And there is nothing in the APR that prohibits the, the application of the impervious coverage rules to the entire area. There's just nothing in the APR to do that. And that's what I'm asking the board to consider. Yep. 
That's where I'm coming from, Mr. Chairman, on that. It's, it's, it's very, it's quite common that I combine lots to comply with zoning. I need frontage, I need more area. That's, I, I, that's done a lot. Here, the only thing we have is a narrow use restriction under the APR. And it doesn't go any further than that by the language that I've read to you. So that's, that's where we're coming from. Mm. So, yeah, you would, I mean, you're, this is your land, so you're making right. these decisions, you feel. Mm -hmm. and, and there's something else about um, and origins here, too. The, um, that this was done in before 1994 when they changed their APR language a little bit too. Is that what you were reading was the old one? Or the this, is the cur this is the one that's imposed. Right. What's old and new is the nature of, of the way they function. This one has a right of first refusal. Right. And newer ones have a, different, yeah. uh, have a different style. But this is the one that controls this land. And if the board doesn't have a copy of it, I'm, I'm happy to give you this, this yeah. copy. That I comes from well, the registry. Oh, we should keep it on the record, I guess. Uh, we and I've marked the two in yellow, the two clauses that I read to you. Yeah, can, can I just... Uh, this, is from, this is from... Uh, 1992. So this is the one that goes with your land. Right? Would, right. Would, it, right. Correct. would it be Correct. fair to summarize what you just said, that the, the regulations of the APR uh, dictate how the APR is written at the time it's written, but once it's recorded, it's essentially permanent. Well, of course it's permanent. Right. Yeah, right. It doesn't change at all. Can't so yeah. the fact that the regulations have evolved since the time that APR was imposed can't go back and change yeah. the Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's a given. And, and once done, is intended to be permanent. Yeah. Can, I, can I make a comment? Uh, I, I, I'm, I represent Pioneer Gardens, and I actually have a unique little position that I've been a contract attorney for the Department of Agriculture for over 30 years. I do a lot of APRs for them, and I uh, do it on a contract basis. I'm not an employee of the, of the Commonwealth, but I do represent them in the acquisitions, including the title work. And I know from my own experience that I see almost half of APRs are mixed APRs. In other words, there's single parcels of land where the front has a different use than the back. Mm -hmm. And a, a good example is the, the Williams farm, the Luther Belden farm in Hatfield. They recently, they have a, you know, their home farm is all APR, except the front is excluded, you know, where the house and the uh, barns are. And they recently put a digester on there, which is a completely uh, inconsistent use with the APR land. But it was all part of a single parcel. The APR land is restricted but the front piece, the front two acres, is unrestricted, and they put the digester on there. This is a similar situation where you've got a, a front parcel that is unrestricted, and they're making a mixed use with the agricultural uh, parcel consolidated, which is... Uh, no offense, I would, I would consider a digester more of an agricultural. And, and the other thing that kind of complicates this is we know that in Massachusetts, they declared that marijuana is not agriculture no no and, and I understand you're not going to grow marijuana no so. no no that's not what they declare that's not what the law says it's what what section 48 says, uh, section 3 says is that marijuana is not considered agriculture for the purposes of the agricultural exemption okay so if you're if we're in an agricultural area yeah it's agriculture if we wanted to grow marijuana in a, in a residential area you couldn't claim the benefit but of the what I'm saying, you, couldn't, you couldn't grow it on the APR land. That wouldn't be a permitted use of the, of the APR. I believe that's what it also says. That's, that, uh, there, that hasn't been settled. Oh, you know, that's the, the way I read on that's that. Way I, I should add that there's a I bill think there's to legislate. crops, like turf, I almost think, can't be raised on APR land. I'm not positive, but I've heard that. But, but, what can but there's some restrictions turf. about what grass. Yeah, but, but grass, this but APR yeah. doesn't say that. So this APR is in 1992. So turf is also off the table for that. So we have as Pioneer Gardens two properties where it is an A, it's, a, you know, there's, an, you know, for example, the bridal barn, we probably are familiar with that. That lot is a three and a half acre exemption. So the front that is non-APR and the rest is APR. So we ourselves already have done or this has been and on the other side on Wapping Road it's a 60 acre parcel of which 13 acres are APR exempt we can put a building lot on there or whatever we choose or allowed to do so this is a continuation of what we already in two cases have so I encourage Max you raised this of 
that this violates the APR. Can you point out where you find this? Marijuana is not agriculture. In, in, this, in this APR exemption, can you find what you are, you know, please read it. But what we're well, saying, I don't even no, think it's really the marijuana the that's the issue. You're using it for, like, for uh, impervious. Uh, you're trying to put more square footage onto that lot so you meet that requirement. Yeah, which we are allowed to do. The APR land. So now, but that's not really, APR land is made for raising whatever, but it wasn't made to do this, like John was saying, a double count of the property. Let me speak to that. Uh, the purpose of the purpose of the APR is to hold property. and the use of it for impervious calculations are entirely consistent. Impervious, your impervious coverage policy does the following. Typically, the engineer can oh. speak to this. Typically, we like water to go back into the ground yeah. where it falls. Right. So there is runoff. That and that's still the case. The ground, that's why, in, uh, the, and the impervious that we're imposing on this site is on non-EPR land. We are not imposing any, any new, net new impervious surface on the APR land. We are simply using it as it currently functions to take the rain and put it in, back into the ground where God, God made it fall. So that's what we're doing. We're not, and we're not doing it in a manner that endangers uh, the purposes of, 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 of your zoning bylaw policy. So that's why I don't think it is double counting. The, 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 and, and if we want to call it double counting, nothing in the APR, APR restricts that. That's the argument I'm making, if that makes sense. I, is, are, you, are you understanding what I'm trying to say? I know what you're trying to yeah. say. So that's why I, if, if you call it double counting, it is not inconsistent with either the policy of your bylaw or, or the policy well, and the language of the APR. I understand absorb the rain and stuff like that. Yeah. But it, you're using it like, I think Max is trying to say, you're using it like not like a agricultural. You're actually using that land now as part of, part of where you facility. Yeah, no, I hear yes. that. I hear that. But in fact, the, the APR describes a series of activities that can and cannot occur on the site at no point does it mention use of this for compliance with impervious coverage under a zoning bylaw? There's nothing in the APR. I'm sure there isn't. Yeah. I mean. So that's what. So that's why I'm very comfortable in saying this is not this is not an issue under the APR or your zoning bylaw. That's and where I'm coming. So uh, one question would be in the reverse case where we had permitted the marijuana cultivation with the same plan that we have now on those combined lots. Uh, let's say it had 30% coverage exactly. If the owner then sought to put an APR on the undeveloped farmlands, um, I, I don't know of anything that would block them from doing so. And would that, uh, so by um, essentially the, the counter argument to us would say that imposing that APR on that piece of land would be a zoning violation. No, I, I tend to agree with you. What you said is if that 30% was met with what the Footage and they wanted to put that in APR, I agree, there wouldn't be any, there, they would meet all the requirements. But if that was calculated into their uh, coverage for the 30%, I would say they wouldn't accept it because it's not all just strictly agricultural. You're saying just the opposite, a little bit. Well, I, am, I am saying that these two cells, residents of the town, are going to continue to use I that know. land in a manner entirely. I, I know. I know that land is going to stay that yeah. way, and they're going to use it as farmland. I yes. think they're great for the community and stuff. I'm, yeah. I'm not questioning that whatsoever. Yeah. I don't think anybody here is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, My concern is that you, by doing this, you you impose on these uh, owners a loss of a right that was never intended, and I take that very seriously. I'm I'm arguing for right and property because this is, is is not a deed. It's not, designed to, it's not designed to deprive them of the normal and customary rights of ownership, as the language that I read earlier suggested. And this one here, where you can combine the two and comply with the zoning without changing the use, 
because it's going to stay agricultural, is a, is a right that deprives, is deprived to them under this kind of an approach. I think, and I don't know if Yap put this land to APR or not, or somebody bought it when it was in there already. So when, when that was done, they gave up the rights to use that property in a certain manner. It was just for agricultural purposes. Hey, no, and no they benefited much. financially or however they benefited. They do, they get paid for that. Right. Yeah, typically so they get paid for that's that. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Whoever did this, I would assume they understood they're giving up some of their rights because I think being a landowner, especially a farmer, right. there's like a double-edged sword here. You know, sure. they have a lot of property, taxes, all yeah. this stuff. Sure. And we need to be con concerned about that. Yeah. And whoever did put it in APR gave up those rights. But and now you're saying you want to use them no, again. No, I'm saying this right was not ever surrendered, never intended uh, to be surrendered. Maybe There's not an that's, ounce that's, of language in there. Your interpretation. So uh, if I can, uh, you, it's easy. If it, it, you can just look at the APR. Yeah. It's silent. So I, I, but but I, mean, I just want to, I think it's Patrick Melnick said me, about yeah. uh, the Hatfield farm. Mm -hmm. If that was in reverse, if the APR land was up on the frontage, and the back land was whatever it is, you could do whatever you wanted in it, and they wanted to put di that digester on in the back land, would they let them put a driveway through that APR land to get to that back land to do an, uh, the digester? No, but commonly in these situations, what happens is when you put the front part of the APR and the back is I on know, I, I understand. They I'm reserve not, a right away yeah. through the front to get to the back, right. otherwise they reserve but a right away. But if you but, had that right away, you're probably not getting paid for it yeah. or Compensate but the, the case well, that they still, well, I'm still just one more yeah. comment. This is what I've been I've before. You, you got a perfect example here on this plan, okay, of what we're talking about. The APR restricts the use of a certain part of their land. You've also got a wetland that runs right through the middle of this property. Many towns, Northampton is one of them, I know other towns as well, do not allow you to use the wetland portion of your land to count for, for, open, for, for open space. Your board probably has the right to restrict the use of APR land for counting. You didn't do that. You didn't restrict the wetland. You didn't restrict the APR. I was going to ask that question because I was going to say if it's a wetlands, I don't even think you can count that in as in part of the impervious because it is what it is. But okay. you, you, the only reason right. you can't count it or you can count it is your town yeah. does not exclude that. That's right. You could, by zoning, exclude the right to count the wetland. You, you haven't done it here, and you haven't restricted the use of the APR land. Yeah, for so the, Hadley and Northampton both specifically have provisions that say you can't count wetland area as part of that calculation. So, so the but wetland is the same it. as the APR land. It is restricted so use by law. Uh, I, I don't know every letter of the zoning code, but as far as I understand, yes. I'm sorry, Patrick. No, no, I just, the wetland part is restricted by law, by the Wetlands Protection Act from use. And that is very uh, almost the same as the APR land. It's restricted because the landowner deeded a restriction to prevent him from using that for other than agricultural purposes. But your board has not prohibited the counting of these restricted lands, like wetlands, mm -hmm. from your open space requirements. Mm -hmm. It's really that simple. And so I'd like the, to move okay. on to uh, this is a public hearing. And so, is anybody in the public? I'd like to get some comments. Um, we're, we've talked about a lot of things up here. Yep. Just say who you are and. Uh... Uh, Tim Milchie, I'm a member of the Conservation Commission. I just want a clarification. At our last Conservation Commission meeting, there was some question about whether the Planning Board or the Conservation Commission would be um, getting a ruling about the wetlands. And did you folks take care of that already so that at our next meeting we'll be able to discuss this or no? Is that what. Um, Wetlands mitigation? Is that what you're talking yeah, about? Or? Yeah, that was a. Yeah. yeah, Chris, perhaps you can speak to this. Right. So um, the, the peer review engineer did review the report and plan for MSWCA on the wetland mitigation. Um, and there are a couple of comments on it. And you'll be responding yes. to the CONCOM on those issues. Correct. I think right. it, it goes yeah. to, to CONCOM, Tim. I yeah. think that. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to make sure that yeah. somebody had done whatever mm -hmm. needed to be done. I, I don't think that. I think that. Uh, whether we do it as a con condition, that's that's part of what, whatever the wetlands mitigation is going to be. You need to decide mm -hmm. that. We will decide that. Yeah, there and was some question about who's going to get it here. 
So I think it's in our peer review. So could you, the town, Diana has um, the report. So if you can make sure you get that, I can try it's to remember send it to you tomorrow too. But. And you meet on the 28th, so we'll try to have somebody there from us as well. All right. Yes, Mr. Again. Yeah. <laughs> Health or building inspector? Both. Okay. I've reviewed these plans multiple times for everything. And only in the past week I've reviewed them. They're probably pretty up to date on them. But health-wise, septic systems and all that, water, et cetera, et cetera, none of it's on the APR property. All of it's 100% under control. They have preliminary designs and everything all set, okay? Good. Building-wise, there's no concerns about building construction or the construction of the build, existing buildings, okay? They've, everything on those plans, <coughs> seems to fall in place pretty well. All right. No errors or omissions no that I can find. Good. There was the, um, some of the new building going right up against the wetlands, that was an issue, but that has to be taken care of. Uh, the, the new building is not uh, adjacent to the wetlands, and it's actually not in the buffer zone. There is some disturbance of the buffer zone near okay. the wetland. Um, there's construction, obviously, on the existing greenhouse, which does come very close to the wetlands. Okay, so you'll monitor that, Dick? All right. Yeah, they're going to put a block wall up, I think, on the greenhouse at that far end. That's where right. it comes to issue. Oh, so just putting up that wall. Right. Uh, yeah. And that was to avoid having to build a fence, which would then right. put us right. even closer to yeah. the wetland. All right, good. That was last me. Anybody else? All right, so um, any other questions, comments up here? So we're looking at doing a, um, so we have a site plan, stormwater, mm -hmm. and um, special permit. All three. That we need to make uh, Correct. That's decisions what we've on. applied for. Um, I'm, I'm trying to see if we can compartmentalize this, uh, some of the questions here. So we, we, I did, we tried to check in with our attorney who didn't get all the details on this yet. But basically, um, He's just given us some advice. Um, not, and, and you'll be happy to know, he concurs with Attorney Evans' statement that the enforcement of the APR is not our, that's not our jurisdiction. So we agree with that. That's, and to tell you the truth, that's why, from the beginning, as a, as a resident on this board, I wanted the people who are, who do have jurisdiction, to tell us something about it. And I'm delighted you guys all tell me something. Just think how easy it would have been if the state told us the same thing, you know? That, and so I'm a little still uncomfortable with that, I gotta tell you. But anyway, that's, that's my own thing. Um, and then he says that so, but, he, but in fact, the, the board uh, certainly can uh, inquire about these kind of things. And then basically says that we could even make it a condition of any permit that the, uh, on the consistency of the use with the APR. So we could make it a con condition, um, which you're all willing to, because yes. you, you, you're very confident yes. about this. So, um, you know, that's kind of one way to do it. Um, I, I think, and again, that was just, he, he just kind of got a little quick dose of this and didn't look into it very deeply. So the other question is we could, we could ask our town council to look deeper into this to make us, to give us uh, a, a more legal opinion from the town's point of view. And, and it's, you know, we've worked with all you guys before, so it could be they come up with the same thing, but that would give me some more level of, of reassurance, I guess. And, and um, it is, I am, I mean, I, I feel um, more comfortable with the consolidated plan. I think that that was a good move. I feel mm -hmm. very, uh, I felt very uncomfortable with the plan as it lay before us uh, previously, so I feel this is a positive move. Um, significant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, and I, anyway, I do think that the APR, looking at the, the intention of the APR, um, just to reflect what you're saying, the intention of the APR is to retain agricultural use as much as possible. And so the intention is, the integrity of that intention is held by this plan in the consolidated, in the consolidated lot. 
I felt using the scattery kind of patchy yeah. thing was very uncomfortable for me. Um, so I, I do see how that, I do see the shadow of that easily. Um, and I do, and I do feel strongly too, I, um, the enforcement of APR is our, that's our town's job is to be certain that the state's regular, you know, restrictions that they have sold. I mean, these farmers bought restricted land. Mm -hmm. They didn't even, they weren't even, they were the beneficiaries I'm imagining mm -hmm. in that it was less expensive <laughs> right. property right. Yeah. because it was less valuable mm -hmm. as it was restricted. Yeah. Um, so, and I, and I do see, and I, I'll just reflect this one more thing that I think Attorney Dubendorf points out that uh, APR, the way it's set up is to benefit the farmer in that they can use their land and still um, be farmers. And that's kind of what this is happening. If you imagine that this is a property that's being used for something else beside agriculture, they can use that and still be farmers and still use the farmland. So anyway, I, I feel a little more clarity on that. I feel a little more comfortable about that now and I certainly feel more comfortable with a consolidated lot, mm -hmm. that that just um, that was a good move, and it is an ANR, and it does come before us. It's, that is, those are the kinds of things that we do all the time here. We do them in between every other little thing that we do. <laughs> is sign off on an ANR, and those lot consolidations come to us for that very reason, so that we know what, what, where those property lines, yeah. where the property goes. So. And I do think that the, the, our, our pervious surface issue is important. It's critical, and I, you know, the, the shape of the slot is ugly as sin. I mean, I, I'm sorry, I, there's nothing about it that's, you know, makes any sense. Um, but it does, it does secure a, a certain amount of pervious yeah. surface. If this was a residential lot. None of that would count. Right. Just by the shape of it. Right, 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 right. But it's not. It's in it the. It doesn't meet any of the lot right. requirements. It's agricultural. I don't know. So anyway, that's that's where I stand right now. Which just ones? just to we, turn my we, hand. Our our zoning, if uh, square footage wise, yes. you could have certain angles so you're not drawing like mm -hmm. crazy lot configurations. Yeah. Yes. To, you know, so you get with, your frontage. With issues and stuff like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Right. I I I. I are you saying it would be impermissible? If, it would be impermissible as a residential building lot. It would say that one, yeah. one, one residence? It would be if you were trying to use angles no, like one, this one to get your area? One residence would be fine. Yeah, I think it could be used for one residence. What Max is saying yeah. is the geometry. It depends, yeah, yeah. depends where, what part of town you're in. Yes. But you need, like, say, in the agricultural residential, and I'm not an expert on all our yeah. stuff, but I think it's 200 foot frontage and 60,000 square feet. So we'll say you get the 200 foot frontage, and then all of a sudden you come in and draw these crazy angles. Yeah, you have some lot widths requirements. Right. I know that and where you measure them. But I think this. But it's angles we excluded some of the area, yeah. uh, which is detailed on one of the plan, yeah, the overall lot plan, plan yeah. I think it's no, no, called, I, I, I um, that did exclude a little bit of land because it was too narrow. Mm -hmm. um, but for the but the vast majority of the property does actually mm -hmm. meet the letter of those requirements. Well, we excluded that portion, that area of the lot that did not meet your lot width requirements. I understand a little bit about the APR, but now we'll say, yeah, if you wanted to put a, a structure up on the APR land that was pertaining to farm land, uh, farming, say a tractor barn or whatever, you could do that. On the dis APR, yeah. yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Because that's pertaining to agricultural. Yes. This impervious thing, is not really agricultural. It, you're you're doing it on a piece of commercial property now, but you're using it it's on the APR land. So well, that's commercial. where I think Max is coming from. Yeah, no, I hear that. I I could just tell you your bylaw doesn't discriminate like that. Well, no. I, and that well I don't know if it's our bylaw. I think yeah. it's actually the APR's well, the APR guidelines. The APR doesn't say that either. Well, I don't know if they say it or not, but. I think they should weigh in on it personally. Well, then perhaps we could live with a condition that we get approval before we go in pl place, and I think that would settle well, it. Well, that's a big gamble on somebody's part. Well, I think I think I I, 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 I would <laughs> hesitate about that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because there's just no assurance that the right. this department in Boston 
We'll do anything that we ask them to. There's, there's, there's no mechanism for obtaining advisory opinions from MassDoc. I mean, we, we could uh, sort of a registered mail notify them of the plan, which would give them the opportunity to object, but wouldn't require, requiring a response, I think, is what would be, what would be problematic. But they've already been notified about this by January 14th. I sent them uh, the, the request for the release of the right of first refusal. It lays out the whole thing here. If you don't mind, I'll submit it to you. This is exactly what was sent them on January 14th. This is the request and explanation of everything that's going on and, and uh, giving them the opportunity to buy this land. That's what the Commonwealth has. They have the opportunity to buy it within 60 days or find another farmer to buy it. And uh, they've been told the price, they've been shown the contract, they've been explained everything. Uh, so. Well, that's, that's, I didn't, this is new information to, to us. I have been well, informed of this. We notified, um, yeah. Because on February 15th, you, you received a reply from the assistant commissioner to your email. Uh, Dick, right? I was CC'd on it, so. Right. right. And, and that, it, 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 it made it seem to me like that was the first they had heard of it. Oh, no. No, we told you earlier in one of the previous hearings that we'd given all the notice that, to Indar. But that's all right. There it is right there. Two parts of the state apparently don't talk to each other sometimes. Apparently. <laughs> Well, this is a request for the release of the wa a waiver of the right of first refusal. It gives them the, the contract, gives them information that is subject to this permit, this contract is subject to this permit, and so forth. Which we you're obliged to do because of the transfer. Right. We cannot sell yes. this piece of land to anybody without first offering it to the Commonwealth. Right. They have right. the right to purchase it before right. anyone else does. And you filed these papers in January. January 14th. Right. They've got another 30 days to act. I don't think they will because the end use farmer, you probably know, is going to be on. pioneer. They're going to continue to right. use this right. 15 acres just as they have in the past. So I don't think anybody is going to exercise that right of first refusal. Right. But, and we didn't ask them specifically, can we consolidate these parcels? But we did give them the opportunity to purchase this land and told them that this is uh, being bought by Gorgitz and that uh, uh, Gorgitz was uh, getting a permit from your board. So, you yeah. know. Who's Gorgitz? I know. Gorgitz, <laughs> how, how do you pronounce it? Gorgitz is going to end up being the owner, but they're going to be leasing it to his son's mass sink. Gorgitz is going to be the landlord. So. All right, so this is helpful. So they're notified that they're selling it, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't notify them ask, about this. didn't ask the mm -hmm. question yeah. you're asking today. No, didn't know about that at, yeah. on January 14th. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that part of the duty? Did it come apart? It's pretty thick, it's 30 pages. Yeah, I guess that's the main part. Uh, oh. All right, so plenty more. What, what's our uh, Could I? options here? I, I think that most of your concerns can be, or all your concerns actually, can be addressed with three simple conditions. One of them is that this consolidation plan be recorded. We, you, know, you asked us to consolidate, we're yeah. willing to do it. Uh, two is that the site plan incorporate all the comments from the engineering peer reviewer and that it be approved by the conservation commission and three that the uh, at pioneer gardens comply entirely with the uh, requirements of the uh, apr including the right of first refusal provisions and the, and the new owners of, uh, oh certainly if the, yeah. if the new owners own the APR, then right. they have to comply. Right. Well, we should say that the, all the terms of the APR shall be complied right. with. Right. Right. Yeah. So I guess you know, to, to some of our question here is that I'm, I'm not I'm not sure there is any. Anybody has ever done this before, so whether it's going to get an answer what was or not. The first one, the first one, consolidated the, the consolidated plan consolidated. be recorded, which is what they've shown us now. Yeah, they just yeah. okay, no, actually, fine. I, just, right. I just didn't get it down. So, is that um, would we want to see something from our town council? Yep, I think so. Um, if he, if he says it's fine, then that takes pressure, pressure on doesn't it? The state to see if they would respond. I don't know how you do it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I agree. Could I, could I, I agree. I'm sorry. And, and I, I guess to, just to slow you down, so this, this is all new to the state, too, and I think they're going even slower because it's marijuana, right? It's, it's not like this. If this no, was they, something they go slow and everything. 
I, I, I don't disagree with that, but I'm just saying that that's even more caution, I would say. Could, I could, you, uh, could I ask you to articulate precisely the question that you think this board needs an answer to? I thought I did when I asked whether consolidating, uh, that is combining the three APR parcels with the non-APR parcels violated the APR or not. And that's the way I understood your no, concern to be. I don't think anybody's a problem with that. Because when yeah. Patrick said it's on the 14th you wrote them a letter uh, addressing, you know, the first mm -hmm. right of first refusal, yeah. I think at that point in time we knew that you were going to have, because I asked somebody, I said, now if you can't use that APR land in part of this process for the what would happen to the project? Would it go away? And nobody really answered that. It said, well, we'll have to come up with another game plan or whatever. It wasn't that quite that addressed. So right. when that letter was sent, everybody was aware that we were concerned with that the being used as uh, part of the impervious mm -hmm, mm -hmm. calculations. So, so, it, so, so in my mind, the question is, um, can you use the APR land to count as impervious, uh, the pervious surface for the business over here. Okay, that's okay. You know, that's process? really the that's really the that's, that's, that, that's the question. Because yeah, I think that's, that's his job. Yeah, and which is a manufacturing, you know, they wouldn't know about right. your local zone. Yeah. Well, What's that? Town council is not going to. APR's not going to know about your local zone. Your town council can answer that question better than anyone. Well, he. he he didn't yet, so I know, that's why I think we need well, to. APR, I don't think that question APR is not going to answer that question. I don't think our local question, attorney is going to do it zone. because he's going to be speaking for the uh, APR people. Well, he might say you need them to, you know. Yes. If he said that's, that's probably what he's going to say. But he might not no, because no, we know how lawyers are. But you're saying that we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly, I didn't, I certainly didn't mean to be unclear. In where I was <laughs> if I, if I was, I apologize. Oh, you've been very clear. Yeah. I always <laughs> apologize for being confusing. Yes. I, that's a, that's a corporate, that's a venal sin in my business. So the question is, do the town bylaws or does the APR itself contain any prohibition against using the APR land for the calculation of impervious surfaces? Is that the question? Uh, I'm not sure. I, well, my question was a little more general than that. I want to give the attorney more general. Uh, I want to bring him in on this discussion and let him figure but it out. But shouldn't we narrow it down no. to some precision? No. I want to, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I want, I want our attorney to yeah. have a little wider scope of the project and, and say our question is whether you can count this as the impervious surface for this over here given the and I'm not sure if the shape well, should matters at all. No. How about, how about this, all, John? It's all if they about get, water. Well, he it's was, all about infiltration. Right. How, you got to get the water to run down that 85 foot stretch. It's which is again so, that's the reason for the. It's a no, no, can, I speak, can I speak to that? You know, yeah. Yeah. Service, so. If if we're if you're thinking that we're relying on a plan that runs water to those odd shaped lots. We're, we have submitted a very away. flawed plan that no. your peer review uh, gentleman did not pick up. No, so I, we, I, I don't take it that <laughs> way. Yeah, we, we're not intending. That's the concept, though. Right? No, 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 it's not the concept. No, not this, the is concept. About, this is about the percentage of land in your town on That's an covered. aggregate basis that is impervious right. to, to uh, rainwater. Yeah. And, and so that's what's going on here. What we want to have happen here is it the water go here and that in this aggregate only 19 percent prevents that from happening mm -hmm. your bylaw standard is 30 percent mm -hmm. so we're the only function we want here under your bylaws so cool. is they have the, the rain that falls here that god sends here hit hit the ground here and go into the ground there we're not capturing it we're not doing an engineering thing the only engineering stuff, if we're good, and if your peer review guy and our guy is any good, the only engineering stuff right. is to manage stormwater specifically right. because it's concentrated. Here. Right. That's, we're fine with that. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If, they, if they come up with what they're doing here and, and submit it to our, to our town council, I mean, what, wouldn't that be a, a, a way to make a decision? Yeah. 
Can you guys, can you guys between you, come up with your rationale for this? What do you mean? Well, their rationale? Yes, to our attorney. That, that's a simple that's matter. A, if yeah. the question well, then, why is, why not try that? If well, the, we're saying, what, if, what's well, our question? What is we, we want to make sure question. we agree what the question is, so we can get the yeah, correct yeah. answer. Articulate the question, Paul. Just write it down. Well, my thoughts are is that if if these guys say it's this way, we send it to our attorney, and he says, no, it's not that way. You guys are full of bull crap. Yeah. And or yeah, okay, I understand it. It's fine. I mean, to me, that seems to answer the problem, doesn't it? I. I want, they're they're, I want ascertaining, the that they're ascertaining that they've got the answer to this problem, and they send that well, to our town attorney. Okay, well, then that's their that assertion that they don't right, think it's a problem. Want. And we send it to our attorney and say, are they, are they telling us the truth here, or what are we going to do? And he decides. Okay, I'm, I'm, I feel comfortable asking the attorney what I, my question is. Um, and I think well, okay, I'm just seeing that. that does this... How does this kind of we can ask, but I don't know how clear he's going to be on it. And I, exactly. He might just say it's really out of my. Well, then we've got an answer, zone. haven't we? Yeah, right. I know, but yeah. I, he'll respond in one right. way or the other. But right. I don't think he's going to say yes or no personally. No, I, so, so what is the question? Is it, this is the question we have, right? It's about this, this APR land out here. Can that count towards the yes. impervious? Sure. Yes. Is, that's really to me yes. what it comes down to. Mm. So that can it, it, it? Yes, it Max, can does be, that work but for you would the, will the state allow that to right. happen? Right. And that's the question. Do, do well, we have, right. this, do we have this digitally? Do we have this digitally? Yes. Then we can send this by email to our attorney. Well, well actually, this one we just got tonight. So well, can we get it digitally? Yeah, we can um, digital, yes. send it to our attorney Absolutely. and have him say, yeah. is, this, is this going to work or not work? I mean, yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's really all that's got to happen. Yeah. Is it, is, is it the impervious surface or satisfy the open space requirement? Isn't that the better question? I thought it was to satisfy the open space yeah. requirement. The I think I think that's the, the issue. Surface. No, no, no. It, that's our no. bylaw. Oh, no, I don't is think it, it's the open space. It's, it's impervious. It's, 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 it's written as yeah. a maximum I, impervious area, uh, not sorry, as a minimum. Sorry, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a formula it's, calculation. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's impervious as a percentage of total area. So it expresses itself as a percentage. That's yes. yeah. Okay. So it's not about open space or not open space. It's about area, impervious area as a function of the entirety mm -hmm. of the lot. Good. Right. Yeah. But could can that be? Yeah, exactly. I'm with you. I'm with okay. you. So do I understand the question correctly? That namely, whether the APR parcels can be included in the calculation of. Yes. Impervious yeah, surface. Yeah, that's right. In this, in and, this case. And yeah. does this that question case. not turn on whether there's anything in the bylaw or the APR that prevents it? Maybe. I'm not going to ask that question. Well, you're the lawyer. We're I'm not. Gonna I think it does. I'm I'm gonna gonna ask we understand very clear that, that, that there's two, two things that govern this. One is the town bylaw. Between and, them. Which we've scrutinized and don't find anything in that prohibits it. Mm-hmm. And I don't think anybody in this room has. Mm -hmm. The other one is whether there's anything in the APR itself that prohibits it. And again, we've scrutinized that and not found anything. I don't think anybody ever proposed that to us anyways, or when I was on the board, of using APR land to meet the 30%. The it's the first time. It's like that's why it's so let's, so let's, 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 let's yeah. Yeah. That's why, Rick. Right. Right. Yeah. Let it go. I think it's an unfair question. Yep. All right. So we will. Um, so I'll talk to him and then have him contact you if he, if he needs to. But if you could send yes. us, if you could send us this plan electronically. Yeah. Did uh, I articulate the question correctly? Dick, I think we got it. If you, you know, you, 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 you can. Say whatever you want. I'm going to ask him the question. <laughs> What's the question you're going to ask him? I'm going to ask him. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. no. Yeah, yeah, we're going to go. We're clear. We're going to move forward. I, I'm going to send you a single plan that clearly uh, delineates the properties and the areas in question so that it's very clear With exactly what we're saying. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 Okay. Good. Cross yeah, but, or whatever. We'll but are we willing to do the poll? And you straighten out that? An approval panel. Town Council. Well, could that be made? All right. So we are. Um, any other comments from the public? They're not going to do it tonight. So. Um
this will be new information, so I think we need to keep the public hearing open. Okay. Yep. Uh, I understand the question to be as I articulated, I hope, and that's if, if Mr. Costa contacts me, that's the way I would express it. And please, someone tell me if I've got it wrong. Dick, I think we're going to get that. We're going to get an answer. Yeah, I think okay. we're fine. Yeah, we're good. We're fine. So, um, and, and again, I, you know, I've, I've said it several times. I'm going to say it again. This is nothing against the, the property. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, um, Arjun and Yarp were there when the town was debating this whole thing, and we were very, it almost seemed pro cultivation of marijuana was actually the thing that the town was more mm -hmm. in favor of than, yeah. you know, retail and other stuff. Right. So, you know, that's that's there. So, mm -hmm. but now, because it's new, first time, these are questions, I think we need them answered. You know, and it's probably not going to be the first time we're going to need it answered. So. Thank you. Because I had this question. Now, you can almost do it anywhere in town, raise if you meet the criteria and stuff. Is there a limit on how many places in our community can rate cultivate marijuana? Mm -mm. No. I think there's a cap on yeah, retail yeah, locations. Yeah, retail, yeah. I, I, I agree with you. No, 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 I didn't no, think no, there was. I don't think there's a cap no. on the number of cultivators. No. Yeah, I didn't think so either. I just why I wanted to ask the question. No. So if we're all good, um, so our, our next meeting is, is uh, March 4th. Uh, I'm just not sure if that's too short of a time. But well, we can try for it, continue this till then. And if things go quickly with our attorney, that might be. The other thing we want to do is write up the decision ahead of time. So, um, and, and we want to do that carefully, and we want our attorney's input on that one too. So, um, well, I would ask that you. I, I can ask that him. I can ask him to get working on that again. Site plan, um, stormwater, and, and then the special permit. Um, special permit again is is the more general one. Does the benefits outweigh the, the detriments? Um, that's when we get into economic and stuff like that. And I know you've got the host community agreement already. I think the select board is fine with it. Again, security, the police has said, I, I want to just get make sure they sign that comment sheet, but all the town officials seem to be fine with it. So um, so hopefully we can get that decision, a draft of that decision maybe at the next meeting too. So March 4th, anybody want to? I move that we uh, continue this oh, public hearing um, for the uh, site plan review at 198 Mill Village Road to the 4th of March at 7 o'clock here. You want to you want say 8 o'clock? 8 o'clock? 8 o'clock? 8 o'clock? 8 o'clock? Okay. 8 o'clock? Does that work? Yep. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? All right. 8 o'clock, March 4th. One question? Yes, sir. Uh, Sometimes um, ask the applicant to propose a decision, a draft decision for you to look at. Do you not do that or not do that in the opinion? No, not, I think we, we well, actually, yeah, we're ha happy to do something so to look at it if you want us to. So, um, it's your call. Well, let me just thank you, uh, Planning Board. As you know, we lost our consultant from the FERC Yep. We lost our uh, planning person that we had hired for a month. We have an interim. Yeah, what did you do to I didn't do anything. <laughs> we have an interim administrator. I am, I'm not going to write the whole decision. So um, anything that could speed it up, I think it'd be great. And then, but I, again, I want our council to look at it. Oh, yeah. Right. So I, we, I think I'd be open to having you guys, if, if you know how to do this. I think that makes some sense to yeah. yeah. just do that. Yeah. Speed it up. And, um, and you can edit it. And you yeah, know, it's there's yeah. no pride of authorship, but I think it's an aid yeah. to the board and its work. Yep. It could say no, it could no, whatever. But I I offer that routinely. Okay. Particularly because I, I couldn't help but notice you are shy of yeah. some staff. Yeah. And so we're done. You know, we're doing these two solar ones, and we're using the same template because it's very similar. Right. This is a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wouldn't mind it. We could run it by the uh, I don't know the council so templates, we'd, we'd templates but if you want to do one. Have you seen other ones from around the, the it state? Certainly would. Yes. All right. There you go. So, yeah. All right. That would be helpful. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Then why don't you uh, sign the continuation? That would be great. Thank you, Joe. So, can you just um? 
Can you just send the that I mean you updated? Absolutely. Just send it directly to go and you can quick look at it. And probably you don't even need to come to that meeting if you think it's all fine. You can just give us a quick memo on the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks very much. Have you done many marijuana? Because you guys could become experts or something. I mean, this right. wasn't, we didn't get into the whole security fence and stuff like that. But it was on there, you saw it. Thank you. Yep. All right, we got a couple of other quick things uh, on the no, agenda. Actually, I found my minutes here, uh, my notes. So if you need to make the change, we should probably do it today. These are, these are my notes. Nowhere does it. Uh, from which uh, meeting? From the 23rd. And it only talks about the site plan and so on. Oh, thank you. 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 I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'm just... Oh. Did you get a sign-up sheet? I did. Yes. Yes, it's right there. All right. Sorry, it's taken a while. This was something that you. Um, oh, yeah. I showed that to a couple people. Thanks. What is it? This is that note from. Um, yeah, Bert, Hubbard. Rich Hubbard. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you handed one over I here. Know, so. who made copies of the yeah. Did you give me that one back or not? Rich is not affiliated with the Land Trust. No, he's with the, he's with the Land Trust now. And he says it in his letter. He's, he's the former APR guy, but he works with Franklin Land Trust. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I, I thought he resigned. Him. I yeah. think he was. I know, but he says he still has it as yet. I am the executive director, so I think he hasn't left yet, I guess. Yeah, because I thought he was stepping down from that. Yes. He announced it, but apparently it hasn't uh, taken effect yet. And, you know, I wonder if this, any other communities had gone through this. I just. You know, I also it think the like shape of this and the way it all came together also kind of made it a little different, I think. It's, 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 it's not so unusual, but... All right, I lost my... Uh, I think it's but I think it's unusual enough to have a lawyer, a town lawyer. Yeah, yeah. Well, I still really I think, think... I think that's fine. That's All right, so next up is... Um, oh, that box. Payment of... Approval of payment, payment for uh, postage. Oh, Do you yes, have something about that? Well, Sarah Campbell. We need well, let me go. Let's go in order here. Approval of payment for postage. Yes. All those are approved. All those. I don't know. Here. I think I just can do that. I don't need to. Oh, so I just have to sign that. Authorized payment for services to Sarah Campbell and Ty and Bond. Do you have that in there? Oh, here are our little signs too. Dang it. Look at that little signs. Here it is. Sign here. So we're okay for A, okay for B, okay yes. for C, and. B, and this is um, Sarah Campbell. There's no like formal. And these are all being paid out of um, applicants. Fees. The applicants Did money, it. yeah. Do you have one and for time bond? Right I swear I signed this already. I don't know. You know, things are getting mixed up in there. It's, uh... All right, and then you got. Request for comments on five industrial. Can you read those? Uh, so here's a request for comments on four Boron Avenues. Uh, applicant requests an appeal of the building commissioner's decision to allow. You, these guys need to hear it. No, please oh. read it. Sorry. So, um, Hugh Mannheim, 311 River Road, South Deerfield. The applicant requests an appeal of the building commissioner's decision to allow renovations to an existing structure, a cottage located at 4B Boron Avenue to use as a habitable building. I thought we talked about I that. I thought we did too. Oh, we said no comment. And said, they want me to write that down? It's okay or no, no, it's not okay because they, they, they did it deliberately. So what, what, was it? what are you saying, they, Paul? There's an over on Thayer Street. I, I, I know where no, well, yeah, you're the talking guy, about. The guy built a deck and put a hot tub on it, and it was oh. a, a couple oh, of yeah. feet from the, from the lot line. And he knew it when he did it, but he said he'd do it and worry about it later, apparently. That's that's the word I got from yeah, it. Yeah, but Rachel was reading something about Born Avenue. Born Avenue. Avenue. Oh, this, this is, is a different this thing. Is different. Yeah. Oh, I'm Very sorry. Careful. I'm sorry. Because I think this is this is for uh, renovations to an existing structure. Um, it's not yet done, I think. To allow renovations to an existing structure located at 4B Boron Avenue. Which I don't know. Hugh Mannheim. Yes, I, I'm, it's... 
it's on the driveway going to the State Sands Cemetery. Oh, I don't okay. know what that. I don't think that's a town road, but I don't really know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And oh, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right by the the by, Polish uh, deli. My Manham's property is back there. Yeah. Right. Yes, and he owns the deli, and he owns yeah. that piece of property. Yeah. And people, I remember people living there and stuff. And, and then it just went unused for a while, and he's trying to rehab it. So I don't got know what it. the issue is. I got is. it. I got it. Okay. We, we need to, it's too bad Dick isn't yeah, here. Yeah, Dick's he gone. Can fill us in, but he's gone. Well, this is, it says the applicant requests an appeal of the building commissioner's decision to allow it. I know it, but how can we? we, so we someone, have, right. So I don't even. Not enough comment. information. So somebody's no trying, to, trying to get him shot down? Yes, and, that's what it sounds like. No Dick comment? put him to a stop, but. Right. Why did he do it? What was yeah. his reasoning? And he wants us, and I don't think it's up to us. No, no, no. The zoning board. No, no comment. Who wants to say no comment? Everybody? Uh, we don't have <laughs> enough information. How can we make any comment? Yeah. This is on 4B well, the only Born comment Avenue. is we need more information. Uh, right. Not enough information. No comment. No comment. And then um, is the 5 Industrial Drive in there, or did we yes, do that it is. last time? And what's yeah. that? What's uh, the 5 Industrial Drive. Um, Deerfield Industrial LLC of 5 Industrial Drive West, South Deerfield. The applicant requests a driveway approach from site of Atlantic Furniture, Inc., located at 5 Industrial Drive West to Route 116 Sunderland Road. Well, no, driveway think about that a little earlier. to be used to alleviate truck and vehicular traffic at Industrial Drive West and provide second means, means of ingress and egress for emergency vehicles. We have a representative here. No? Yes, why not? We don't have Well, any. he's just going to he's the proponent proponent of it. Well, I know, but I mean some information is better than none. All, All right, so my you, I know I, I, okay, so I know about this. You do. Uh, okay, good. Okay. So the landowner I think built the thing um, and it's really a Dedic Dedic doesn't like it and Paul's arguing it quite vehemently. Right, but like I said before, John, that that driveway existed when that facility was put in. And for whatever reason, they didn't utilize it. Right. I don't know if Dedick told them they couldn't utilize it. I don't yeah. know that history. But all they did is just reshape it and put pavement down. I believe it was paved. Uh, but that driveway existed when that facility was put in. Right. And just was never utilized. So my comment to Dick was that when he showed me this plan, he, it, I said, why don't they? I thought it would require a, a site plan review because it's disturbance of land and grading. So in our bylaws, it requires that. Now, if the building commissioner thinks it's just a small project and they don't need it and we say that, that's fine. I was... So let me ask, pose I, I, this you know, question. We'll say you have a long dirt driveway uh, and you want to shape it up because it's all potholes. Uh, when you go to do that, are you going to come in here and get a site plan review? If it's residential, you don't need it. It's commercial where, okay. it, where it fits I'm sorry. in, and that's the difference. So yeah. it, I'm just saying that's what our bylaws say. I don't think right. they need to. It's a pretty small project. I think this is a DDIC issue. I I tend I totally agree with you. I think yeah. that's where they need to settle it. I yeah. guess. Well, it's going to go to the zoning board of appeals. So this is a request from the zoning board of appeals. The ZBA is asking us for our comment, request for comment. So it's going to ZBA. Uh, yeah. You, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. You're, you've stayed this long. You might as well. We might as well listen to you, <laughs> good trooper. So, as you know, the, as a representative of, as of a Atlantic representative Furniture <laughs> of Deerfield Industrial LLC. Oh, okay. Um, so, as you know, the entire property was resurfaced or re repaved uh, a year and a half ago. So the paving was redone. By, this, by um, Dedick or by you? By us. Um, as Roger indicated, that was an existing driveway. So that was part of the repaving project. We didn't know the status of the curb cut with the state. So we did obtain a curb cut permit from the state before we did it. So Was there a curb cut existing already, Matt, or no? There was, yes. Um, the permit was inactive. But and you got it reactivated and yes. updated? Correct, yes. So what's it's, the problem? What's the question here? It's DDIC. It's DDIC. It has oh. an issue. And I think just, I don't know the whole argument, but when they build the industrial park, they, I thought they had two exits, and that's where they wanted vehicles to come in and out of to do a little traffic control along, along 116. You know, this makes sense. You don't want to have every, you don't want every 
driveways every five feet, right? Yeah, especially if they try to go on. But, but it's so, on a state highway, and so, the I mean, state I, gives them a curb cut. I don't understand well, what we got to say about it. Well, well, we don't I don't think it's really us. I, uh, I know it. I don't see it's what we got. So yeah. we're running. Yeah. Well, well, it's we also no. the state. Same so thing. It's not really not us either. There. We have no Thanks, man. live information. <laughs> We have, Good luck. We, have a, we, we, we don't have, we feel no comment. We feel we have no input. It's yeah. a data, it's more of a so internal. No comment. Got it. Yes. Yeah, and what's, it, they're asking for a variance or a what? A driveway approach from site. I just don't, I didn't know that they're the permitting agency for, I don't know. Uh, Anything else not reasonably anticipated? Well, I still, hours I still think we should resolve this other thing oh. or something. All right, so Paul found some notes from... I found my notes from the meeting, and it does not say anywhere that we voted on the special permit. For, this is the 100 Railroad Yard this Road. This is on the January 23rd minutes. Yeah, I wanted to put them back. And I always put them in the front so that well, she can find them well, on the way, because well, I think I signed this before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Railroad Yard? Yes. I've we, we voted, voted. We voted. We voted to um, site plan and uh, we voted the site plan and the stormwater, and then we went right to set right road, and we voted to revote the November nineteenth vote because we didn't have a super majority right on that so, meeting, and that's all that's on here. There's nothing else about we voted. doing. So we might have forgot a special to permit. do a motion and a vote on the special permit for hundred railroad yard road. Okay. Now let's see who was at the meeting. I mean, this. Yeah. Let's see. I don't um, believe I was. So it was John, John Baronis, John, uh, John Waite, Rachel, Kip, Paul, and Max, and Roger was not there, and somebody abstained. And I. I did. Yeah. Max did. Okay. Yeah. So it was five zero one on the other two votes, but we didn't do that one. Right. So now we can't vote tonight because. We don't have um, special permits, requires super majorities, which requires five votes. But if Roger wasn't there, there's only four of us. Who so it's go? not going to But come. But if we don't have s seven members anymore, what's the super majority? Five. Still five. I think it's still five. Well, see, I was, when John asked that comment, how is John stepping down going to affect us, I figured that would change the percentage. But That's what fact, I thought too, but I guess in not. In fact, I remember this, this was true. We had this issue with the ZBA because they, they, they didn't at one point have enough people yes. to have a ZBA. That was the railroad yard one and that then, we went to um, oh, right. on the 15th of November. was just reiterating it too. You're, you're, was it, you're, but you're Rachel, obliged to have that. Was it so we can always, sorry. Was it because there wasn't enough members at the meeting, or they didn't have members, period. Because in our case now, I'm, it's no members. So is supermajority two-thirds or, or 75? But I think it's two-thirds of the number. I mean, Because four out of six is two-thirds. Yeah, OK. So yeah. actually, so it's better than four out of seven. It it's actually makes it, yeah. it actually helps. No, it helps us. I just don't know if that counts. I mean. I would think you would because I would too. Because it, are you going to abstain from this, Max? Or are you good? He's absolutely. still abstaining. Okay. From the solar at, at Deerfield Road. Yes. No, no, no. no um, the railroad. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. He abstained. From oh. No. So he didn't change his mind. So we need Kip. Uh, so yeah. So hopefully the next meeting we can do it. Okay. All right. So it's till next meeting. Right. I reviewed those tapes, but I don't you know if that sign? counts. Oh. But you have to sign the paper. You have to do one of those Mullins things there yeah. to say you did it. That's all. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll sign it if you want. Uh, right. We'll have one for next time. All right. Okay. All right. So I move that we uh, grant the special now permit. Now I sit, but this is this is for. He can't. We, we still can't do it. Let's, uh, let's th wait this this is time. for the railroad. Right. Part. We can't do it tonight. But oh, right. I would tonight. sign that. Well, you can sign but it. now, so we'll have a paper. do we have yeah. the decision for Set Right Road to sign tonight too? Yes, we signed that. Okay, that's good. Yeah, thank you. I'm it's called Frontier it. Solar. Yeah, yeah, okay. Right road. All right, I'm just trying to make so sure we that we do Site plan, stormwater, yep. special permit. Gotcha. Okay. And basically, I'm going to take that as the template and change it into uh, 100 Railroad Yard Road. So yep. the next meeting, we can vote on it, and then we'll just do the special permit at the same time. Yep. All right. Sounds good to me. Oh, smoke. That was, it seems like we talked for an hour about the same thing. But anyway. 
What? Um, okay. And just so you know, when we got when we got those stapled photocopies, they were two different things. Make sure you. Yes, can. there were two separate things in there. One was, was from Deerfield Naturals before, and then the other was just so. Paul, yeah. are you going to do the um, annual report? I think we didn't do one over the past. We haven't two done one for the past two or three years. Yeah. Keep volunteering, and it doesn't happen. Well, so. let me see. Let me try. I'm not gonna. I, I gonna stick my neck out and get chopped off. Okay. But. I mean, this is the kind of thing I would love to we have. So if Connor was there, we could have him draft something, you know. But yeah. there's nobody there. There's no one else to do it. So. Well, I will try, and then, uh, but I'm going to hold you so on it too. You. <laughs> well, if you can get it to us and then send it around, and we can all chip in a little bit. Well, that would be see, the thing to do. Let's see what we can do. You can kind of put a skeleton. I'll give it a shot. The main thing is, we've, we've done so much work. We got to let people know. Exactly. Yes. I think most people know. <laughs> well, I. Between the solar and the marijuana, there's been a lot of and the discussion. Family, what's her, what's his face Dollar there? You know, so oh yeah, the Dollar General. So the update on that is, I have no update, and so it's with <laughs> it's with town council, and we'll hear when and they're we, not going to tell us here, till they decide but, what they're doing. But they're going to do some. The town's going to do some defense of the decision, and and then it'll come back to us for some input. I said that we want to have some input at some point before they. Just decide what well, they're they We're probably talking too much, so. Well, no, it's it's public. It's public now. Unless unless the, the selectmen want to take the responsibility for the whole thing and. Well, they are, but I ask that they consult with us. So. Yeah. Okay. That's my opinion. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. I move, move to adjourn. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ten. No. Nine fifty-five. Nine fifty-five.